Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, enemies and friends, welcome to the show that never ends. You are tuned in to On The Rio. This is our uh, weekly movie news review show where we tell you all the best of the goings on in the world of TV and movies and you are tuned in to our year end special. I'm your host Steve Johnson and joining me today is my brother from the same mother, Mr. Johnson. How y'all doing out there in TV land? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> and the last best hope for the resistance, Mr. Yeah. Woods. What up, what up? This guy's what up, getting up, good up, at memorizing up. those lines. Right, right, I'm, right. I, I'm getting better. I, I, good getting is a better. strong one. Right, right, right. Okay, so this is, like I said, our year-end review. Uh, we are going to tell you what we think were the top five best and top five worst, which I think is the more important list, uh, movies of 2017. We're going to give you a little bit of year in review, what we thought were the most important stories or story. We'll see how that goes. And uh, <laughs> right. before we end this thing off, we're going to tell you our top five movies that we are looking forward to in the coming year of 2018. And we are, we already know you're all going to watch. Um, the Avengers, so we're not no going to include that. No one's going to watch the Avengers. Nobody <laughs> um, even cares about the Avengers movie. So no, nobody except the you know most watched trailer ever in existence. Right, 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 right. Yeah, who, who's going to who's going to watch this? Except for those millions and millions of people. The All millions. Right. So uh, let's get this thing started. I want to, and I don't want to be a, like a negative Nancy, but I want to start out with the worst movies so that we can build our way to the best. I want so to end start on a positive with bricks. You want to build you know, bricks. save the best for last. Yes. You yes. want to build bricks. So, and I want to say when we end this thing, uh, rock box. We are going to let you know what we all think were our uh, number 1 movies of the year. The things that you should not have missed. So, but I'm going to start things off. I'm going to give you my uh, top five worst movies of the year. Give us your take. Uh, and then we're going to go to Mr. Woods, and then we're going to go to Mr. Johnson and see what their top five uh, worst movies were. So Switching up the order. <clears throat> yes. I usually always go first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to give you a little bit of respite this time. So, uh, number five worst movie of the year in on my list, The Dark Tower. The Dark Tower. Now, this thing, the reason it's, it's, it's on a lot of this, a big this thing was a fart box, right? <laughs> I, it was and, rock box, Steve? No, it's worse than a rock box. Like, Nothing's it's, worse it's, than it's a rock wor box. It's Armadale. worse than a brick, okay? Right. And the reason why is that this thing could have been something amazing. This, the Dark Tower is, like, Stephen King had a hit year this year. He had It come out. He had Gerald's Game on Netflix. He has Mr. Mercedes. Gerald's Game was kind of a sleeper because most people don't even know about but that. But this is what I'm saying. It was, it was. He, it was like an, a great Netflix movie. Right. It, that it would have flopped if it was in theaters. Right. Be clear, but it was a good movie for Netflix. Right. But, but in the, in I wasn't the theaters, mad in the right. theaters, he had. It, which was an amazing movie this yeah. year, probably right. the highest grossing horror movie His of all time. His property's been hitting. And uh, I didn't watch this show, but it got really good reviews, um, uh, Mr. Mercedes. And he also had them come back out with a TV show for The Mist. And um, we can't even front, like, right. you know. But. His property wasn't, you know, isn't what inspired, you know, Stranger Things. Because there I, wouldn't be that if it wasn't for It. Right. Right. Um, although, I would say that the. The It movie sort of took cues from the Stranger Things TV shows, but I take your point. Now, the thing that I'm yeah, trying to get to is... a symbiotic is, relationship. This is about the Dark Tower. And if you don't know about Dark Tower, it's one of Stephen King's books that actually says that all of his stories take place in the same world, the same universe. And the thing that ties them all together is the Dark Tower. Right. Now, the, this is like the Avengers of horror. It could have been. Oh, man, and, they, they didn't portray they, that at all no, in that movie. No, they didn't. They stuck <laughs> like, this thing up. And no, man, here's it has the so, thing. Much, so much potential. And then you tell now me... Now that you tell me that, is, I'm like, what? It is starring... <laughs> like my ears perked up. I was right. like, what? Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey. You don't say. And it this could have been everything. And it was a fucking fart box. I'm sorry to curse. Ooh, Come that's on, how, man. That's, that's how God. angry it made me. It's, it's potential loss. Language. Um, so, 
Dark Tower. Anybody want to? I hate how y'all be trying to Captain America me, but <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, no, no, I know he, he he's Look, mi- he's Mr. F bomb. It's late. Trust it's like late. Every, every show, every show. Yeah, this yeah, no, this movie well deserves. And like, you, I'm you've been the doing one, great. I'm the one who's known for that. Right, right. No, you're All right. Great. So, anybody got anything else to say about the the fart box? No, I mean, I just no. But this is your pick, so okay. we're not talking. All right, All right. Yeah, just go picks. Next on, next on my my. I agree. It stunk. All right, Geostorm. Oh, <laughs> oh man! In the slow motion, it was a storm uh, of brick. train wreck that is Gerard Butler's career. Shit was Sharknado. Come on, man! Geostorm. Why are you on Gerard Butler like that, man? If come on, man, this is Sparta, bro. Yeah, but since when? Yeah, right yeah, yeah. now, if 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 uh, the Dark Tower was a fart box, then this is a shit show. Okay. Geostorm is that bad? Listen, if you're gonna there's tell a lot me, of bricks out here. Let's if you're gonna clear. tell me that, look, this is like disaster porn, but it wasn't even good disaster porn. Okay, you want me to believe? I hope this it spoke. Thing. It spoke to like global warming and things that's gonna happen, and you know no, whatnot. And, and again, that part of it was was that premise was okay, and there's something on your list that had a very good opening, and it was all downhill from here, right. and. I am now remember. I do have some honorable mentions too that I will get to in a right, second. Right, right, right. But you're gonna tell me that the smartest man in the world is Gerard Butler, and he has a neck beard. Like this dude is drinking Wait, pours. Like why, this why, man, why can't why a, a person who's smart have a, all, neck beard? I have a neck beard? Why are you hating on facial hair? I, I have a neck Word. beard, but I'm saying Gerard Butler doesn't even pretend to look smart in this thing. Right. Like, well, maybe he's just you know down on his luck and he's just like no. Everything. They're portraying like he's the smartest guy in the world, but he's really just like a mechanic. It's like oh, okay, Armageddon, okay. but not good. Oh, so he's Eugene? <laughs> no, right, I, right. even even I wish that. He was Eugene. Right. But, like, he lives in a trailer park on a mountain. And then his oh, brother... They, so they found him. Yeah. They found... They uh, fired him. And, I didn't see and his Storm. brother happens to ha- take his job because him and his brother they took a are, are t- apparently work in the government. Right. And his brother is given that working class white collar accent for a dude who is a government official who's supposed to be Harvard educated. Right. None of it makes sense. The jokes aren't good. The, the, the mystery they have going on is right. terrible. It's all bad, folks. See, Geostorm fell in that category of, and I know, LeVar, you have the same thing, where it's like, it's those categories of movies that you just know from the rip is a Brit. Yeah. So you just I was like, I'm like, just not going to see it because so, it's, it's, it looked terrible from so the So that the was the one, is that the and, one you suffered through or is there but worse beyond that, that you we, knew were bricks? We were dealing with a lot of hurricanes and storms and natural right. disasters at the time, so don't nobody want to see that crap when when that stuff is going on. Oh, people love disaster movies. But not when in, in not the state of the really world happening. was happening. It's like, nah. Not when it's really happening. Not when it's really happening. Right. So, again, shit show, right? <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry. This is not shit show. That's reserved for something else. This one was a shit storm. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you're building up. <laughs> I'm building These up. These okay. are building up. All right. Okay. Ghost in... Uh, uh, and ghost, this should be... Ghost, Ghost in, the in the in in the appropriation show. Okay. Now, this I know thing you have a lot to say about this. It was again this the premise here. They had it was so much potential here, and you know the Matrix is my favorite right, film right, franchise. Right, right. I I pretend the third one doesn't exist, but it's my favorite. And and the Matrix comes from this property. Is it's it's inspired by a lot of what is going on here. Okay. Uh, this is probably one of the greatest uh, animes ever made in people's book. At least top 10. People will tell you that Ghost in the Shell, the anime... Uh, well, it was, yeah, it was visually yeah, 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 great. It was visually Dragon groundbreaking. And, Just like Akira is. Right. So, so when I heard they were making this into a live-action film, right. I was like, You, you yes, win it. Let's go. Let's Let me ask you a question. What anime, Jones. what anime has been successfully translated to live-action thus far? Um, Man of Steel, think. the end sequence with him versus Zod. No, <laughs> I have to think. I have to think. That doesn't answer. count <laughs> because it's just like it's it's been a lot of bricks when they try to translate, you know, these things. Like an anime right, and, and it, again, yeah. this thing, like, you and, know, and like, again, uh, let's say, uh, 
The Last Airbender. Right. Trash. Well, again, that's an appropriation. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like but that, now, that's and when we when, when I when we say um, appropriation, we we have to understand what we're talking about. Speed so, Racer was okay. This film just the, visually, the, the, the premise, it was like visually. it was true to the it was true to the original source material. I would right. say that it felt like watching the cartoon, right. and it looked cool. It was very cartoonish. So, but the thing about this film is the the premise of it is they essentially co-opted uh, the the dead body of a girl, right? Uh, put her sort of brain. It's like RoboCop, right? right? And again, probably where RoboCop came from. But they put her brain inside of the robot, right? And that robot is Scarlett Johansson. Now, a but it's lot a of robot, were, so why can't the robot be Caucasian? Because think about what's or happening look here. Caucasian. This is an anime, and what we're saying is they put an Asian person instead of casting an Asian person, right? right. Yeah. They had a, a a white woman, and Scarlett Johansson's great. But they had a, a, a white woman playing this Asian character. So she's still right? supposed to be Asian? In the film, the dead girl was an Asian girl. So, like, you, how... No one said... This is like Gods of Egypt bad. No one said, hey, that's not going to look right if we're saying the meta-narrative so is first. an Asian they girl, the Asian girl is and now they put, put inside of a white, white body. body. That's what they did. But... Even if I don't want to be a social justice warrior, right? Okay. So in the original one, when did that happen? Did they put a real girl They put an Asian girl inside of an Asian looking robot. She had black hair and everything. So. But she had black hair. Guy, don't try. Did you see the come on some look I just gave you? Did you see what just happened right there? Look, so again. So was everybody else in the movie Asian? Or most people? No. None of them. None of the leads except for their boss. Was an Asian guy. Uh, was it supposed to take place in Japan? I don't know. I don't know where it took place. It may have been like a fictional city. Um, but again, let's take all of that out of it. This is not one of those movies I didn't see because it looked like a brick. It was, and again, but when I saw the stills in the trailer, I was it's just like, like okay, why did you pay to like see this? Because right. you have a movie pass. The, the, the anime, right? right? Yeah. But the narrative here falls apart. There's everything is hollow. Right? right and 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 you know I have uh, Blade Runner on one of my best picks right and it's that's what this could have been what Blade what I thought Blade Runner was mm-hmm. but this was this was terrible so appropriation Blade and show right. all appropriation right appropriation and show next Detroit ah uh, Catherine Bigelow Detroit Detroit makes your list huh this this was and almost number, my number, number one that's number worst three. of the year. Right. And again, a lot of people look at Detroit. So what what this this is from Catherine Bigelow, the ex-wife of James Cameron, not right. important here, but right. also the Oscar winning uh director of The Hurt Locker. I like and that I think movie. it nominated also Zero Dark Thirty. And now her style, she she's known for gritty realism. Yes. Yes, she and is. And now Watching this, I have to wonder though, right? Because I can look at something and say it's gritty realism. It it seems real, right? But it, it but does it have verisimilitude, which is like the appearance of being real, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Because I'm not a soldier. Using college words, right? Verisimilitude. I, I'm not. I, I'm not a soldier, so you can show me something like Saving Private Ryan or or Hurt Locker or Zero Dark Thirty, and I can say, this looks authentic. Right. But how authentic is it really? Right. Right? Really? So I don't know, but I but now when you show me the plight of people of color, and no, I wasn't around in the 60s, but this film basically was torture porn. Right? Uh... And this film is at its best hollow. It is at its at, best. At its best it's hollow. It is at its best. Trash. A, a person's interpretation of what they thought it was like, right? You have singers in you here. Were, what I thought you were feeling. Right. You have sing like a, th- there's a character in here. He is a singer. Right. And while he's being tortured, they they tell him he should start singing, and now he's out there like he's hitting notes like he's on a stage, 
while he, we're trying to pretend he's crying. <laughs> yeah. it, none of it is good. Detroit, none of it. The characters are hollow. There's Detroit no real bad. narrative other than... How do you know shit like that didn't you know, happen? I was, I was, amped. No, I was no. actually excited to see how this no, film was going to play out. No. This is, and then they have him going to the church in the end so he could put his whole life into his choir song at the end because that's what black church people can do who sing. Stop it. It was wrong. It was bad. It wasn't good. And and this that's is why you don't hear people talking, talking about it today. Salvation. Yes, yeah. those Detroit riots were real. But again, no, we don't get into any of why those riots happened. They, they talk about it for a little bit, but the focus is not why it happened. It is just the riot. The focus is not on the characters; it is on the torture of these characters. And, they and so that didn't happen. Characters. They exaggerate. So that didn't happen. Uh, no, people. it absolutely. The riots did happen. No, but about people getting tortured and stuff that happened, right? Yes, that's a real thing that happened. So, but again, it's just the, the all characters, of the characters and the people, were look, exaggerated. Right? They're get, but it, that's it, every it Hollywood is, movie. No, it's not because when when I watched when I watched Twelve Years a Slave, like those were real born out characters. This you can tell it is a person's view of what they thought it was like. To did you see Birth of a Nation? I did see Birth of a Nation. I wasn't a fan of that movie. Um, but that's for another discussion. We're yeah. talking about 2017. We right. should have a discussion. Okay, so movie. the movie was hollow, uh, and that's why you don't you hear it talked about that right that now, around, uh, in in award season time. My blackness will not allow me to admit such a state. Okay, that, that's all good. <laughs> All right. Next. I ain't talking no crap about black movies. All right. All black movies is good. Next worst. This is my number one. Transformers. No, I thought that was three. No, I think that's it. That's all I got. Let's see. Hold on. You're definitely missing something. So we had no. Dark Tower was number five. Tower. Geostorm's number four. Uh huh. Ghost in the Shell's number uh, three. Ghost in the, yeah, appropriate. Detroit so. two. Okay, so and number one is Transformers: Transform? The Last Night. That's my mistake. The last this work. is the worst. Fi- this one is the shit. This is the rock box. If Detroit was was hollow, dog. This is the rock box. This is the shit show. This is the worst thing I saw all year. <laughs> Hide your wife and your kids away from this thing. Oh my god! You will never get this two hours back in your life. Don't do it. Let me explain something to you. When I say you see Transformers fighting Nazis and and wizards and King Arthur, and for some reason, Anthony Hopkins is in here just saying, I'm collecting a check this whole time. None of it makes sense. Why logically it doesn't make sense? It's visual noise. The Wiccans, you know, why, like the Wiccans? Is, why is... <laughs> Why is Mark Wahlberg in this thing swinging a sword? Why? This is one of my worst movies, too. This is the worst movie. Yeah, didn't Optimus... Uh, uh, clearly, this is a spoiler show, but uh, didn't Optimus um swing his sword and Mark Wahlberg... Uh, pulled out... Pulled his sword, right? Like, his, yes. his hand turned into a sword his and it blocked into the a sword, sword that because Optimus Prime is swinging a sword and little Mark Wahlberg can... And Stop, all of a sudden, no, but Optimus that sword, Prime remember? is no longer evil because yeah. Bumblebee said, yo, it's me. And I had a voice the whole time. Yeah, I could talk. I was just, you know, fine. Yeah. I was just fine. That's on my list, too. Man. Or how about that, that sword that was so damn important, but then he just threw it down like it was nothing. The whole That's but the a whole, metaphor yeah. for the whole movie. <laughs> it's like it means nothing. This, right. this whole thing, the whole movie is about me having Excalibur. But I was just Garbage. Throwing, throwing it away. Listen, All right, man. that's it. I'm done. I can't. I don't want to devote any more time for this. And hello to Colleen, who was watching us from Jamaica. Hey, 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 hey. All right. Listen, man. Next, it's yeah, your listen. turn, buddy. Listen, Number I don't five on your list. It is all right. So let's be clear. Again, this is the worst movies of 2017 we're going through before we get to the best. There's a lot of bricks out there. There's a lot. Tons of bricks. Um. And so with this film, and as I said before, um, you have to understand that we all know that there's some films that you see out there and you just know to stay away because it's whack. Right. There's no reason to even go see it. But I felt that if I didn't include this movie, (laughs) right, then it just defeats the whole premise of understanding what makes a movie a brick. Okay. Right. And so number five on my list, if I'm not mistaken, is Kidnapped. Okay. Am I correct? Is that what it you have queued up? Is, is, is what you got. It's poorly written. Okay. 
poorly filmed, poor, poorly, or poorly filmed. shot, right? Okay. Poorly shot, cliches galore. Okay. Um, the acting is awful. Right? Okay. Um, she's a bad parent, right? Even damn. In, look, I I don't the the it just angers me. The whole movie angers me. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of your energy. It's a waste of thought. I don't know who greenlit the film. I don't know who got a check. Well, I know who Yo, got but a that's check. the Oscar winning Holly Berry. I don't care. Like, she needs. That's the cat woman making Holly Berry, bro. <laughs> I need her to go away. It's not the BAPS Holly Berry. The books. I need her. I need, I need Holly Berry to go away. She served her time. And if like you wanna, Caesar, it's she, time to. She served time something. To go. She served something. I don't know what it was. But anyway. The, Make me feel the, good. The, yo. Slow the, down. It, Slow it, down. It, it, Slow down. Take it easy. Take it just, cheap. listen. Kidnap, that movie angered me. Everything about it, its whole existence needs to disappear. However, even though it should be number one, I have something else on that list. Okay. But kidnap right. is a brick. So moving right, number on. Number four. We number got four. Number four. Kingsman, the Golden Circle. So now, for me... Right, there's a lot of people who, and I said this before, there's a lot of people or a younger audience or whatever who enjoyed the film. Right. Um, for me, it's not my cup of tea. Uh, I understand that it's stylized and things like that, but I said that it's like Mountain Dew. Uh, I don't know. It's like Mountain Dew and Call of Duty mixed into one. Okay. And that's the type of movie you're getting, right? And so it's like Triple X with British people. Yeah, but on like. 4,000 or whatever, a million. And, but with Kingsman, the Golden Circle, the movie is awful, right? Because, it's kind of stupid. It, yeah, because anything that you were building in the first film, they said, you know what? Eh, when you've seen this guy is alive. And they, and they know, got rid of let, the best character. Let, yeah, let's, yeah. uh, who is, uh, Eggsy's, uh, um, the ball headed guy? Yeah, I mean, not a, uh, his yeah. apprentice, his, um, his, um, protege, right? I, yeah. I, I messed up again, not protege, but. His but teacher, the, right? Yeah, but here's the problem with that. Why he, does that he death, died? Correct. Why does yes, yes? Uh, that's not Mark Strong. That is uh, the guy who won the Oscar for the King's Speech, Colin Firth. Thank you, Colin Boom. Firth. And his head got blown off, correct? Or he, he got, got shot through shot the eye. In the by, eye. By, but he was Samuel dead. L. Jackson. Yeah, he was dead. And then they brought him back with uh, foam gel. Yeah, yeah, microbes or something. And by the like way, that. they advertised this movie. If you're a Channing Tatum fan. Hey, he's in it for five minutes, and then and then he's frozen. Yep, correct. Yep. Um, somebody, um, somebody's put in through a meat grinder, and then you knew he was going into. It. But the point but is, the movie. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me go. <laughs> let me continue with my like with my my the rant and guy. Just go in. Go ahead. You know. Also, with this film, you know, you have this guy where um, what happens later in the film? Oh, there's they try to make some type of political commentary, and right. it's. It's poorly done. You know, it's poorly executed. Okay. You know what I mean? So just everything about the film is bad. You know, the action was, I guess, you save something. You, you enjoy the, some of the action sequences. But outside of that, I couldn't stand it. I didn't, yeah. It made me want to throw a shoe at the, at the screen. It was right. pretty stupid. And the, the main death that happened in it, it, it held no weight because you literally brought back the main character that you killed in the first one. So you kill another character in this one. I don't believe you. You'll bring him back. You'll bring like, some foam gel. Yeah, that's it. They'll just spray it all over the place. They'll collect the pieces, put it together, and then, okay, and, we're nanites. And real quick, we got to move on. But even with Eggsy's uh, friends, like, they died in the movie. Did so he care? What? No, like oh, well. people were blowing up and everything else, and it just yeah, didn't matter. Thing. Oh, yeah, that other thing that I said was really stupid when they stacked everybody on top of each other in all of these crates. Where were they shitting? Where did the shit go? They were just all on, on top of these, all on top of the shit, all on top of one another. Where did they shit go? What is, where, where, what they so, Mr. Johnson is the shit police of movies. Yeah. What is, what <laughs> it is, made no sense. <laughs> what, 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 is, what is the act, what is the, um, the, the actress name who was um, the main villain? The main, the actor's name who was the main villain in this one? Yeah. Um, she she had the... Oh, 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 no. That was uh, Julianne Moore. What was her purpose? By the way, what was Holly Berry's purpose in this? Oh! <laughs> to collect Once a check, again, bro. go away. Why are you mad at Holly Berry for go getting a check, away. bro? Nah, man. Don't hate, she, man. You gotta go let away. her get that check. Yo, all she black, had, like I said, it was enough my to blackness hate. will not allow me to admit such a thing. Let these black actors get these checks, bro. 
Hey, and, man. Well, listen. On that note, I wasn't she mad. There was purpose. so much to be mad in that movie. I didn't even get to be mad at Halle Berry. She didn't do bad in that movie. Kid, the movie, I can't the speak movie for. did bad. Exactly. All right. All right. So, and they three. killed, again, they killed the best character in the movie. But next. Number three. Number three. Yo. And then what happened with. And even in. Yo, I, I can't see. Yo, I'm just thinking Come about on, certain let's, seasons. Let's, all right, all right. Let's anyway, keep it going, man. I hate that movie. Uh, Transformers. Nope. That's not what we got. That's not what I have for number three? Nah. Oh, Alien Covenant. Yes, sir. You're right. You're Bob right. You're right. Know. Alien Covenant. All right. So every every everybody, um, <laughs> people who had mixed reactions to Prometheus. But right. I Pr- liked it. I was, a, I was a big fan of But uh, I, I liked what Ridley Scott was going with Prometheus. It was different. And I was, enjo- I was um, interested in finding out who were the engineers. Right? right, but for whatever reason, um, and you and I had talked about this off camera, um, something that maybe the studio was saying, "Hey, we need aliens, we need more aliens, and lots of yeah." Aliens, so, so, right? so essentially, the whole idea of Prometheus was supposed to be that this is in the same universe as Alien, but very separate. Right. In the same way, Guardians of the Galaxy is in the same uh, universe as Thor and Iron Man. Right. But it is a separate thing. Because the universe right? is infinite, bro. It's big. Right. They're in space. And so They're what, dealing with stuff on Earth. What Ridley Scott has been concerning himself with these days is creation. Right? So look, we're not we're not we're not going we're not gonna go into all of this stuff about Ridley Scott. Right, but right. so so the point the point that I wanted to make was so he's concerned with creation, and Prometheus was about the origins of man. Right. Now, uh, people, th- that movie did well, but people thought it would have done a lot better. Now, By beca- people, you mean the studio? Studios and critics, because a lot of critics sort of, it, w- it had mixed reactions, Listen. right? At best. So the thing is, the studio said, look, you got to put some aliens in this thing. Right. And Neil Blomkamp was working on an alien script to do an alien movie. But apparently the studio wanted Ridley Scott to do it uh, because, you know, he brought us aliens in the first place or alien. Um, But the point is, um, because they um, wanted aliens in it, I think this is what you get. We didn't get to see where the the what are they called? The, well, the engineers. The engineers. Yeah, you, well, you don't get enough. It's just kind of jumbled up that the engineers are just there and it's, it's still about the xenomorphs. But even still... The whole point of Prometheus was to lead you to the engineer's planet and then you get there. It just and... turned into where it's all about David and right. his vision of taking over, you know, It turned into a B horror movie. Else. And it was well. It was like a C because you have all of you have all of these. I say it was a B horror movie. For a break. Exactly. Okay, because you have all of these. Uh, you have the ship. You have the characters. Or uh, you know, and they're supposed to take everyone into this like enchanted new planet. And instead, you just say, "Hey, maybe there's life here." Off of a signal, you know, and then you get off onto this planet without any mask or anything like that. It was a film. You're breathing in the air, filled with. You're following allegedly David. smart people you making see, dumb you decisions. You see, look, you see one of your your um, crewmen or your teammates or whatever, their head is severed, and you say to David, "What's going on here?" And he says, "Follow me." And you go, "Okay." And he says, "Look into this uh this alien mouth. this alien mouth," and you get eaten up. You know what I mean? The whole movie is bad. Terrible. None of it's good. And it doesn't Trash. even look good visually. All right. It next. angers me. Now, two is Transformers. And so all I have to say is that Transformers, and I'll keep this quick, is that these type of movies, these big budget uh, action movies, Michael Bay, you've served your time. You know, you've done your thing. Find another franchise, either to do something better. To with, F up. Or even possibly because these type of movies makes me we we were talking about this about superhero movies and all that and he was like well can we really get fatigue these type of movies give me fatigue when you do it this badly and you have Mark Wahlberg running up a a, a glass window or running up a robot screaming and it's like yo he has no cuts he didn't die he has no broken ligaments have, what you, is- have you seen Vin Diesel in uh, Fast mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's an honorable mention, but <laughs> my blackness prevented me from saying anything bad about Fate of the Furious because okay. I wanted to say, well, you know what? You know, let these guys, let them be their own superheroes. But outside Man, of that... I know I said I ain't saying nothing bad about black people, but F everything, cry Reese is in. <laughs> Hey, and we, look, we're gonna get to the year in the view. All right, in a so minute. let's look, go. Let's keep this Transformers let's keep this angry, going. Man. All right, it's a shitty movie. All right, I think that's the first time I've heard something. That's now, exactly now, why Cryries wasn't in Transformers. Yeah. Now, your number one, my number one, this is your worst film of the year, Snowman. Snowman, Snowman is insane how bad it is. It is insane. And it's so bad that if you have two hours that you don't mind never getting back, then figure you out a way. Need the dictionary? <laughs> figure so out a way. To this movie? In. What, like Frosty the Snowman is a killer or some shit? Yes. That's the premise. <laughs> that's, that's basically the premise. Yo, guys. This guy kills people and put snowball heads on them. He puts the head of the, the people he kills onto the snowman. But the snowman is always shown before he's about to kill the person. And yeah. it this is set in Norway, right? Yeah. Uh and so Norwegians are, you know, are are you know, it's this different. Their their lifestyle and how they act and interact with one another is different. Yeah. But it's just, yo, Fastbender is a, a is a a really good actor. He is the best actor in work in the worst but movies. But he's in a today. lot of bricks, man. And this movie is yo. I'll just say this: he goes. He he's going after the killer, right? I know. Assassin's okay. Creed. He, he's going after the killer, <laughs> and he runs out onto a frozen lake and screams out, "Come on, I'm ready!" And he gets shot. <laughs> <laughs> And then that was, yo. And then the credits roll. That was it. <laughs> that was, he 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 went out into an open uh, open frozen lake to confront the killer and get shot. Yo, the whole movie is a brick house. It's oh, a frozen man. brick it's house. A rock box. And I could keep talking. There's nah, so nah, many nah. scenes that I could keep going it's in not, about this movie. It's not worth that much of your but time. Please, please, if you have two hours that you don't mind. Never getting back. It's so is it Sharknado bad? Like it's so bad that it's good? No. Or is it just something that's gonna make you angry? Because I don't know why you would do that to people. No, it's gonna make I mean, or is it one of those things like you gotta watch it? You gotta watch you it. You have to watch it so that you can appreciate the good things in life. Yes. Whenever whatever yes. you're going through, you just went through a divorce. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Your kids just curse you out, they don't call you no more. Yes. You just lost your job. You know what could be worse? Yo, the acting, it, it, it's it's weird. I could be Yo, I could and, be I could be watching Snowman. And Val Kilmer, I don't know why he's in this movie. There's something it's weird. For a check. No. His, his, this, <laughs> that's a good that's a good reason. It's disoriented. It's just bad. Go it's horrible. All right. Snowman is awful. Mr. Johnson, no yeah, number five. The way I sent them to you is not necessarily my order. Well, that's how it is. So <laughs> But that's not my the, my order of like worst. Cause I wouldn't Snowman it's too late now. It's, if it's the way you got it, it's the way you got it. So the way you have it, in no particular order, but this is my fault. Uh, the Mummy. Oh, okay. no, 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 no. See, that's your number one I got. You got to go the other way. Uh, that wasn't my number one. I wouldn't say that. If I was to say my number one worst movie, it would be Justice League. We getting there. We we know but, it's no in particular order. This is in no particular say order. Say it in the order that you sent it back to front. Okay, so Blade Runner 2099. 2049. 2049. You don't even wait. So hold, you hate the movie the and name. you don't even remember the damn name. That's one of the worst movies of the year. Blade Runner 2049 is on your By list. By the way, oh, trash. FYI, that is one of my Best favorite movies, movies of the yeah. year. Trash. Blade Runner. Wow. Yo, I didn't, you I didn't, didn't like get the movie. It, okay. it wasn't enough. Well, no, bang, no, but they on, said. Adam explain. Hold on. Here's the whole thing, though. They said it's just like it's a very divisive movie. It wasn't universally loved. Like people who love. It was. People who like Blade Runner, the original one, like this one. It's visually, it looked good, but it was too long for me. It's it just like, and it's just like, it's like, they they show like a wooden horse and then they just play, like, that, like that's supposed to mean something okay. to me. Like, it, oh, like some carved, whatever. The f- let him, let him. It was, it was, just... it was, it was too long. And it's just like it flopped. Oh, Blade Runner 2049. It flopped. It was, it was. Worst movies? I, I didn't like the movie. 
This okay. is this is subjective. Like, right. like, yes, subjective. Like if you like the movie, you like the movie. Yeah, true. But they said I'm not young. But they said like younger people don't wouldn't really like the movie. But right. I'm not young. People with short attention spans. Don't yeah, like I movie. I didn't really like this movie. It was boring to me. All right. It was okay, visually stunning or whatever, but it was effing boring. Wow. Okay. Um, well, what's up? What else is on that list? Wow. You ready for the next know. one? The next one on my list. Because I will be... combat that when I get Yo, to I'm my still, best I'm, of list. I'm shocked now about Blade Runner. Anything could happen. By the way, 87% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, but it flopped. Okay. That movie flopped. Okay. I'm just saying. I got thought. Wait till you see my best list. What you, you, you say it's good, it. but if, if it was so good, why did it flop? Because. No, don't. People, I'll, because you I'll like artsy fartsy it. crap. Rock box, bro. <laughs> You um, got Hans Zimmer doing the score. You got you got Roger word. Deakins doing cinematography. Go ahead, man. What's nonsense your words? Um, <laughs> that means nothing to me. Next, one. Um, my next one would be Valerian. Valerian, okay. yo, Rihanna okay, now, deserves an Oscar for this movie. Now, now, yo, we're back. Now back we're to back. Rihanna. I want to hit on black actors, <laughs> but because I was I was saying, but I'm gonna go against my. The now we're back. Uh, okay, Rihanna Valerian, was. I can agree with that. Rihanna. She looked good, and I will say that because right. Rihanna looks good. But it's just like her character was so dumb. If if she's made out of flubber or whatever the hell she's made out of, right. how the hell she's gonna get injured? <laughs> Bitch, you a sponge. You fucking absorb <laughs> shit. How the fuck? Like that doesn't even part of my French. But that that shit ain't make no effort right, sense right, to me. Right, right, and right. it's just like I'm supposed to feel something. She's like, uh, I'm di- I'm gonna die. Uh. It right. was like the worst acting I've ever seen. Like okay. people say Beyonce is bad, but Beyonce deserves an Oscar for all of her work compared to this trash that Rihanna put out right there. Okay, trash. I will say. Um, wait, I will. Let me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let her. But this movie, when I seen it, because I saw it in a in a screening. Mm. When I was watching it from like the first 15, 20 minutes in, I was just there like, wow, they spending a lot of money on some shit that's probably going to flop because it just looked like... But but speaking of that beginning, I actually yeah. thought that first 10 to yeah. 15 minutes was some of the best stuff I ever saw in yeah, sci-fi. Yeah, before they, they and, showed the, these two pricks with their douchey faces, like yeah, the, yeah. the two before leads get, in the movie. Before you get to Dane DeHaan, and I can't, I don't know her name, but she was the, the villain... The villain Two people who played terrible villains in terrible movies. Uh, the Green Goblin or the New Goblin and freaking, uh, you know, from Suicide Squad. Right. right. So, so, but the thing is, I think, um, oh, that was her? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, That's why I was so uh, trash. Cara Delevingne, her name is. Yeah. Uh, Rock but, the, but the thing about it is right. the opening for this sort of shows a vision of. It was the, like the Avatar, bro. It was of, cool. Of mankind and how it would work if we were to build a space colony and, and follow uh, what mankind are explorers and, and how it would work moving out into space and welcoming in other uh, species and other races and, and collaborating and then going off into the beyond where we don't know what's next. Right, and, and these then, other species and races need us to survive. And, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't about they need us. It was about we need to work together. It was about marbles. Right? <laughs> and so Let us again, meld to create the next thing. And, you have to make and, these marbles because these marbles are special. But again, oh, as God. soon as the movie actually starts and you introduce me to the characters, all break. Yeah, all the time, and you 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 wasted. I can get with that uh, Valerian pick as being a brick. I can yeah, get with that. But anyway. Yeah, but let me let me get through this so we don't next. waste too much time. Uh, but Valerian was trash. Uh, yes. Next we have Justice League. Uh oh. What do you mean? Trash. I mean when because we could go back and look, and I was there like it wasn't even whack, but. Yo, it was whack. No, Yo, it was but, trash. You know what? But Yo. no, we did say we gave it a curve. Like, it was a curve grading. Like, it, it was, doesn't it deserve was, it. It, that, it didn't. You said it doesn't deserve doesn't it. Deserve it. I, yeah, I was that. being sympathetic because, you know, this guy, Zack Snyder, and blah, blah, blah. I was being sympathetic. I was I was judging it. We did, you like, know. four videos on this Justice League. It's crazy. Man. But Justice League yeah, is trash. Yeah. Super trash. It would have probably been my number one pick. But this is in no particular order. But when you watch it again, because, you know, not that people should be uh, yeah, not that people should be uh, watching bootleg stuff online, but if you see on on YouTube, they got HD clips and just how bad like the Superman stuff, right. just the reshoots. Because I watched it again, and the reshoots are so 
it's like blatant. You can see where it's just like his hair is just in a different way or just the tone of the voice is different. You're and it's about just like Superman? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's just no it just seems with Batman talking oh, about Aquaman. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's just like it's just like different. You can tell, like it's choppy. And it just is it's not a cohesive vision. And it's just like times when they use CG when they don't need to. Or it's just like, you know, when they was having that little fight on the, the staircase on the monument, or they was outside, they could have shot that outside in the park. Why was that whole thing, and it looked blatantly like it was on a green screen? Batman smiled. Okay, so... Or like when he punched Batman into the damn car, Batman didn't have on no no suit. His his insides would have been liquefied. Every bone in his body would have been broke. <laughs> like, he's Whoa. not a superhero. He I punched mean... him, and then he dented a police car. Dead. Dead. <laughs> he didn't have on the iron suit that he had on the Batman versus Superman. Yo, man. Dead. So, so, Batman so the thing, the thing about um, that, that this movie. thing. So there's so much, and I don't want to like relitigate this film, but super trash. The whole. Th let's just start off with the color palette, right? Now, when you watch when these suits are made oh, for Justice these movies, like they're made based on what the lighting will be. Had high right? hopes for this movie. And they, they basically recolored the movie so all the it, it just looks like a bunch of people Everybody, like, playing in dress up. Superman's Everything, costume looks stupid. The Flash costume looks stupid. And again Batman looks stupid. But Batman it's just like, did not what, look like stupid. the scene when he took off his mask and, and then he was there, he just looked like he was wearing some costume that he bought from damn Party City. Like with padding in it, like it looked so cheap. It didn't even look like it was like no. But again, oh, some that's because sort. they 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 changed the, they turned up the contrast and try to throw more colors in it. So you saw all of the pieces of the suit because they didn't want the muted colors that they were designed to be. Right. And when, again, when they make these suits, they're making it with the say with the idea of what is the color what is the color tone. Right? Right, right, right. What will the color palette be? And and that's it why mad spandexy. when you see the suit in Man of Steel or BVS, again, BVS was a terrible movie, but you didn't you weren't paying attention to the suit looking bad. Right? No, no, no. Yeah. No. And so everything about this film, from the two directors' visions, from from cutting out a, a, a separate movie from a darker movie that was there, having two visions, just saying this movie needs to be two hours. Look at the opening scene with Batman, how he's like swinging around, not really moving when he's trying to catch the, yeah. the what do you call those things? The parademons. Parademons. All of that, like the little joke that they tried to make, everything was just... It was bad, and it doesn't the deserve... CG smiles the they put curve. on Superman's face. It, it was Batman smiling. All, all, all Batman, Batman, you know. Smiled, yeah. I'm, I'm all just, right, all right, let's go, because we could we could go on with that. For, it, was, it was super trash, yo. Super trash. Um, next. The next one would be uh, Transformers. And we, we've, we've spoke about that ad nauseum. But I could, let me say, because you didn't say other reasons why it was trash, how pandering it was, like, because... Uh, Transformers has this thing where they do uh, niggerish Transformers. Okay. And uh, but I'm just saying, like they turn up like the the black stuff. Like how you had a Transformer say, "Move, bitch, get out the way." Yeah, you're right. So and like that pandering to it's, black it's, people it's, stuff is just like I don't important. know if it's pandering to black people. I know it's, it's it, something. It's it's whatever. It's just yeah. a lot. Of, it was a lot of like you know stuff like that with the robots being extra like hip hop -y. It's Exploitation. Or, you yeah. know, just like... It, how do you it was get corny. robot racism? Like, how do you get robot racial insensitive, insensitivity? Ask Michael Bay. Only Michael Bay. Trash. Been doing it for okay, and then uh, we have uh, The Mummy. Oh, The Mummy. Here's, now, I didn't see The Mummy. Here's, like, The Thank Mummy you, was trash. Course. Although, I, mean, I didn't hate this movie. It didn't make my... Obviously, it didn't make my top yeah. five. I didn't like it, but I didn't hate it as bad as everybody else. But I it was could, bad, I would have given them one more chance. The mummy was bad. It was trash in that the pretentiousness of that they started it mm -hmm. with all of these characters, like the dark universe. Like, you didn't even get this one out of the gate. But like, then you don't even like, got a good movie oh, yet. Oh, so y'all trying to do the Marvel thing now. with that? I, uh, when I seen that, I was like, you, you know, you played yourself. DJ Khaled voice, bro. <laughs> come on, son. You played yourself. Got you. So, but, and, and again, but was the story I, good or was there here's anything? Here's the problem. And I was mad that Brandon Redeem Fraser didn't have a, a, a cameo on it. Was there Listen, anything redeeming about this the before thing, we move the on? Thing, the thing about this movie was that they, Tom Cruise is amazing and he was being Tom Cruise, 
But this movie didn't call for Tom Cruise. It didn't know whether it wanted to be an action movie or a horror movie or a big Avengers franchise superhero movie. Right. And I didn't like the whole Tom shit with his Cru- best friend, you know, <laughs> how he, that zombie crap where he died and, and no, no, whatever no, the hell. It, it wasn't stupidness. good, but again, this felt like Tom Cruise was basically doing his best impression of Chris Pratt. Right? Like, he was basically 20 years too old for the character he was playing, and it, oh, wow. it, it didn't work. And again, Tom Cruise is amazing, okay. but it's like he felt out of place in this film. Out of his elements. And, and, um, Stay in your lane. Yeah, ball, so ball voice. I, I, I definitely, I didn't hate the movie, and I felt like it was good enough for me to give it another chance, but that's not happening. Okay. This is all, they've basically gone back to the drawing board with their whole Dark Universe plans and basically. But I heard it was like mildly like, successful worldwide. Oh, it did. It, it's Tom Cruise. It did numbers. It, no, no, it, they made money, but okay. not what they wanted to make. It made like a little under 500 million. All right. Um, on a but, hundred, maybe a hundred right, million box. dollar budget. Oh, and honorable dollars. mention, the worst movie of the year, and it was so stupid, the 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 whole premise of it was so dumb, and when I seen the trailer, I was just like, somebody should be fired for even making this trailer. How oh, the hell God. is Hollywood wasting money like that? And I'm out here, bro. Give me some money. I'll make some trash up. Right. Like this movie should called we, Should we show Monster no, Trucks? No, 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 no. You should show the no, trailer. We'll, we'll show it after Yavi does his. Uh, after Mr. Woods does his five, and then we'll do the honorable mentions before we go into the. Good but he movies. did his five worse said. already. Oh, you're right. Okay, then. then it's but time. this is the worst one. This, this is, is the like, okay, oh my so God, let's... Monster Trucks. Just show it to the people. We, we're going to bring this up. All right. Uh, let's but see. it's about let's see, uh, let's, let's make monsters inside trucks. And they thought this was going to make money. Now, this is because called, they, what is the name of this? This is Monster Trucks. Monster Trucks, because they, they figured they could make a new Transformers franchise out of this. Oh, kids no. are going to love it. Monsters, kids love monsters, kids love trucks. Let's put them together. Millions of dollars. No. Rock box. So this, this one... I didn't put it on my list because I didn't actually see the movie. But just the trailer alone told me it was the worst movie, probably one of the worst movies ever made. All right, so now if it was a cartoon, it would work though. Let's 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 do this thing. We're we're watching this. Rockbox. Hey Sam, you don't see something crazy? I'm sleeping out right now. What have you never seen anything like this? This thing's terrible, yo. This is our honorable so, mention. Worst, uh... Worst idea for a movie ever. For a live action movie. What are you? There's something going on here. I don't even know how to begin to explain. Take a look. He likes hiding in my truck. How, who cleared this? thing this? is awesome, but it's smart. I feel like it is an engine for as my truck. As soon as that music right kicks, kick, it's like... From the people who gave you Ice Age? Ice Age? I was just like, then this should have been a cartoon. This is the dumbest crap I've ever seen. Wow. If you like Ernest Goes to Jail. (laughs) If you like Trash. I love you too. This is, this is, this this is like, somebody greenlit this. Like when I saw I the trailer in the theaters, I was Wait, just like, hold on, they're pushing an eyeball back into a glove box right now. This man might not have a word with it. I'm not going anywhere with you. Yes, when you I are. saw the trailer, I was just okay. like, yo, I had to like, is it April? Is this like an April Fool's joke? They're still doing it. They're pushing another eyeball back into the glove box. Yeah, it did. I'm scientist. How, Sway? In a world where it's trust. too different. Okay. Yo, I didn't even notice that Danny Glover was in this trash. A week ago, you were riding a bicycle. Okay. And on that note, I think yeah, it's... A, I, yeah, I can't I do it Yo, I, got I can't do it I can't. All right. Okay. That's clearly right, the dumbest shit ever made. Okay. Like, who... <laughs> So, who green led that shit? Find Yo, out you what should happens. never. Everybody I, who was in that movie should never work in Hollywood again. Just for like, no, oh, they that check should, was worth it. And they should give me a check because I got some ideas. Man. If terrible. you like trucks and you like squids, we'll put it in a movie. Okay. Trash. Right. Now, we've come to that time. We're going to talk about our, our favorite movies of the year. So, starting things off, since, since you went last, you are going to go first. Mr. Johnson. Oh, man. Double dipping, are we? All right. Uh, <laughs> John Wick 2. 
Ah. Now this is a, this is a little more. Now we can get away from the garbage. Yeah. You know, get the dirt and the stink and the filth off of us. Now, how did this right? make this? Yes. How did this make your list? And now feel good about because what we're about Keanu to Reeves do. still got it, man. The action in it was good. I like how you know John they they Vic turned too. it up and it's just like everybody was after him. Just, just that, that that whole thing, and it's just like every assassin w- was there after him because he broke the code. It's just like he was given a job, and he was like, "I can't do this job," and then he killed this guy on the on you know spoilers, you know, killed this guy, <laughs> you know, in this place where it's like hollow and can't, you can't touch nobody here. So he broke the rules. So you know, it's gonna set it up for part three where the whole world is trying to kill him. But it was a good movie. It was very entertaining. I enjoyed it. Right. Okay. So um, um, next. Next on the list. Oh wait, this this you I'm glad to somebody to, to John Wick? I'm glad somebody added this. This didn't really make my my top five. It actually didn't make my top ten, but it was one of my one of the better movies this year. Yeah. I I really enjoyed this movie, and I'm glad that somebody uh, on the panel mentioned it. John um, Wick, especially, was that movie. and it did a good job. A lot of you know, a lot of movies get flack for sort of. Doing world building instead of storytelling, like Iron Man Two got a lot of flack for that. That's what BVS got in trouble for, yeah. among other things. But this film built like it expanded the universe in 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 uh, terms of showing us what the life of these assassins are. I like. enjoy the gun fu. Right, and and again, it, it really worked. But also, the reason why I'm glad this got mentioned, this was the the reunion. Of Neo and Morpheus. Yes. Let, let we got Lawrence that. Fishburne That's is in this thing. Absolutely. It doesn't matter. It like doesn't that. matter. And again, there's also comment. <laughs> yeah. No, but these fights were these fights were very authentic. You know what right. I mean? And that that's a credit to the uh, the, the filmmakers. You right. Know, because they, they now started this... in stunt work. Right. You know, they started in stunt work and yeah. things like that. They started from the ground up. So this this movie. By the way, these guys amazing. were also the second line unit to do some of the action scenes in Civil War. Um, oh okay. Oh, and okay. one of like so this had two. The, there were two directors in the original, and then one of them went off to make an atom, make Atomic Blonde, right? Which is sort of like a female John Wick. I hope that's not like disrespectful to say, but I there there is a that film maybe wasn't as smart as it thought it was, right. but it has one of the gr- greatest long shot fight scenes in that hallway in the staircase. Right. I don't know if you guys in saw the time Atomic Blonde. Blonde. No, yeah. I seen it. You should check it out. If that staircase fight scene is worth the, the price of admission alone, just for that like 15 minute scene. Got all right. The Raid okay. 2. That's all I got to say. But anyway. All so right. The next one on, next my list on your list would be Spider Man Homecoming. Spider Man okay. Homecoming. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. That, I mean, this list is kind of in order, but the reason why that's not further up, but it was a good movie. But I felt like because of the trailers, I saw the whole movie up until that third act. The third act is what made that movie. When right. you see the look on his face, like they're both figuring it out, like, oh, mm-hmm. crap, this is, the, you know, you know, this is my arch enemy. They, like, they're realizing oh. it. Whew. Like that, like right, the tension right. that you felt, yeah, like when yeah, he's yeah, in yeah, that, yeah. that, like when you seen it putting them together this in his spoiler, head. This is like, man. Obviously, you could say. Yeah, yeah. yeah saying, everybody's seen it. You should have saw it. Right? Look, it made saw $880 million. And, and 80 million. Uh, a little, you, you know. Probably listen, saw it. You probably that saw it. That conversation in the in the car. Right. Let's go. Uh, man, good, good, good filmmaking. All right, okay. what, what do you got next on so this? Next, and I'm having some technical difficulties here, but please go ahead while I figure out what is going on. What's your next one on the list? Next on my list is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Okay. Uh, mm. You see, I, I'm. You'll notice a theme with comic book movies. I was rocking with you into Guardians. That's the, in my this personal just, opinion. Is this is just right. of movies that I saw because, like, a lot of the movies that y'all saw, like, I didn't even see them. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I can't go for that. This, I'm just going off of movies that I saw. Mm. What, what were you know the favorite? Right. I can't say these are the best. No, it's your up, opinion. It's you know whatever what you want to say. Because probably like Oscar caliber stuff that's not even on my radar. Look, it's but whatever it's just you want to say. Best of what I saw. It's whatever you want to say. Or what movie was more enjoyable to me? But Guardians of the Galaxy two, I enjoyed the movie. You know, I felt like you know they expanded the world. Right. They're, they they brought in new characters. I liked you know, I liked it. I liked the jokes in it. Okay. Uh, it, it was entertaining. It was a good movie. Good filmmaking. Uh, next on my list would be Thor. Ah, Thor, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Okay, okay. 
I Thor can get with that. took cues Guardians, from yeah. Guardians. Thor, I can get But with. it was way better than Guardians 2. Uh, like, it, this was by far, like, it's, it's, this, it's like unprecedented for the third movie to be the best in the franchise. Right. They basically rebooted Thor with this one. I mean, they finally got it right. Okay. You know, like, they played on Chris Helmsworth's strengths that they learned, you know, after he did the movie, which was, you know, a rock box brick. Uh, Ghostbusters, the, oh. the female Ghostbusters. Uh, uh, they I realized he was the best thing in. in that he was in. The, I saw it, but no, he, he was, was the best I part saw, of it. And so they realized, like, yo, this guy's funny. We could use him, you know, use this in our movie. And uh, Taiko Watiti, the director, yeah, yeah. it's just like he he wrote a brilliant script, you know. And he, he utilized and shout the out to Kevin good. Feige for letting him like do something that was sort of so out, out of the box. box for right, right. Character. Yeah, that's true. I agree. Um, and let, let's hope. You know, for next year, he he lets Ryan Coogler just do his thing the way he let Taika Waititi do his thing. We shall see. Right. And uh, my number one pick, which is probably um, <clears throat> unanimous across the board. Oh uh, uh, no, we go. We gonna get. We gonna get to that. Is uh, no, 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 no. Don't say it. We we gonna leave that to the till we get to the end because we'll all say our number one. So everybody just go one through four, and then oh, okay. in the end we'll yeah. we'll we'll go. So all I right. did I did four. Yeah. All right. All right. So. Mr. Woods. Yes, yes. What's your number five? So my number five is Baby Driver. Baby Driver. I like that movie. Yeah, okay. yeah that Driver's was a good movie. Is, Baby Driver is my number five. I yeah. like the use of music, you know, to yes, tell the story. Exactly. So, you know, it's a typical getaway movie, you know what I mean, on the surface, you know, but it's done. It has a dope soundtrack. Uh, the ensemble of actors. Uh, that really movie is movie what Fast well. and Furious should be. If I, Fast and Furious didn't get so damn ridiculous, yeah, I mean, no, but how don't, don't uh, how long Fast could they Furious. have gone with the you know the race cars kind of thing? And so they had to expand. And I don't really want to make excuses for Fast and Furious movies because I kind of not a big fan of the movies, but I get it. At the same time, I get it. Like it's just one of those things you turn your your brain off and you're like, okay, Vin Diesel's t shirt just never gets dirty. But <laughs> it's it's not about. Um, Vin Diesel or them, but you know, um, the the movie it for me it makes it's it made possible me feel, he has that stuff that you spray on there that you can throw ketchup on it and it just rolls up. Right, right. No, but the it's ways. Baby it's ways. Driver, like it makes me feel like it's more of an original rather than a copycat, just based on how right. Edgar Wright shot the film, how well the um the music goes with it. It's just it's something about it that it draws me in, and so my reasons for like these um the five movies that I chose. And why I enjoyed them is because it, it really pulled me in. You know what I mean? And it's and it, it, something that it, it captured me. Um, and nothing felt forced. Nothing right. felt forced in the movie. So that's my number five. Good thing um, Kevin Spacey did that before them allegations came out. Whoa, <laughs> buddy. Slow down. Everyone, every, our last thing I'll say on that Baby Driver movie is that everyone was at their best in terms of uh, just in their lane. James Burnthal. Pun intended. it. Yeah, in their lane. Jamie Foxx. at their best. Yep. So, um, my number four. Number four. By the way, number I just four. apologize, everybody. All the pictures are out of whack. We're having some uh, technical difficulties. All righty. But we still keep the keep the train moving, right? Keep the train moving. They can, they can hear the voices. All right. So, um, my number four. Now, what was my number four? Cause I have. Oh, I believe uh, Get Out. Is Get Out was your number four. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay. I still haven't seen that movie. I'm slacking. You, what are you doing, man? You have one day to, to yeah, see that movie. I told you there's yeah. a lot of movies I didn't see, so I was just going based off movies I saw. Listen, man. Jordan Peele made okay. a horror movie. Okay. And it was good. Yeah, it wasn't just good. It, it wasn't it, even what it was. Damn there was good. layers to this thing. Like, it was, was it a horror movie? Was it a common, a comedy movie? Was it a social commentary on the the, the natures of race relations in America and how terrifying Yo, white people are to black was people? Was it a biopic? Hey, hey, I'm listen. Hey, some people felt that the movie hey. was uh, a little too heavy handed. I felt it wasn't heavy handed enough at some time. No, yeah. but there's so much meaning and layers there was to depth. you can break down depth. every scene and have a conversation. This is a conversation you know, piece. So yes, and the only reason this is not on my list is because it was on somebody else's list. Right. You know, and so, so that that movie, the film works. It, it was a small budget. 
Right. And they and he did his thing. You know what I mean? Cinematography, everything about this film. The jokes landed. Nothing felt forced. Again, nothing felt forced. And that's what I when when a movie when nothing feels forced for me where, like oh you clearly you planted that in there and it's supposed to be that joke. It everything hits right how it's supposed to hit. Right. Everything was shot how it was supposed to be shot. You know what I mean? And it was a, a very good way of directing, narrating, or, you know, telling a story. You know, the story beats just work. And last thing I'll say about this movie, um, I was a little surprised with who the, uh, how, um, uh, what was his name? Chris? I believe his name was Chris, the, the character's name. But how Chris got um, set up like that. Right. You know, I mean, I thought it was going to come from the parents, but I didn't, I didn't know that, uh. Okay. Homegirl was in on it. So I okay. never knew. But you know, that's a story in itself. Anyway, so number three. Number three. Yes. And I realized what the te- technical difficulties were. Uh we for this part I had organized the pictures such that we would say our n- number five, like each of us would say our number five, each right. of us would say our number four. So that's why That's why if that you're happened. watching this video and the pictures are out of whack, it's my fault. I apologize. But please continue. Yeah. Right. Gotta get on that, man. Number three, Dunkirk. Dunkirk. I heard good things about the movie. Didn't see it either. You didn't you see, see Dunkirk? I told y'all, because y'all was like, oh, you seem, you be thinking that I'll be there, but I don't. Because it's like a lot, I, I, I'm only really interested in comic book movies. I'm very one dimensional. Oh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> opens up, open up the dimensions, man. So, Dunkirk I don't see other stuff too, but mostly comic Shot movies. in 70 millimeter. Okay. By Christopher Nolan, who 70 is. 70 millimeter IMAX. 70 millimeter IMAX shot by Christopher Nolan, who is one of my favorite directors, producers. Like he's the man for me, personally. You know, he's that dude. Um, and so with a film that's with minimal dialogue, um, it kept me engaged. You know what I mean? Just the the way the film was shot, uh, those dog fights that were going on. The even though it's set in um, during World War Two. You know what I mean? The time I felt, I felt like I was a part of the film. I felt like I was in the cockpit with Tom Hardy fighting against the enemy. You know what I mean? Right. I felt like I was in that boat about to drown with those other, um, with the other seamen. You know what right. I mean? I felt like I was Se- on. Seamen. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I, as soon as it I came paused. to my head, I knew. Well, no, there's there's a lot of pauses, but I knew. I, I said I'm gonna go with it. But um, no, just the movie is just dope. You know what I mean? It's just shot well. The 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 frenetic pacing of it, right? It, it was almost I don't know it, how it's, to it's, I don't it's, know how to word it. It's but. an experience, right? And and the thing is, I almost don't know how you watch this movie at home. Maybe if you have a great surround well, sound you have system. Well, surround sound system. But yeah. but this thing, like seeing it in IMAX and having the whole screen sort of envelop your feel of field of view just the way that it it's filmed you feel like you are there so to me it's like you have save it private ryan yeah. and then there's this and you're getting off that boat now there's one thing i don't know how we word this but when you i felt like when the the boat left right when it left uh left the dock also we're not even getting into the timeline pacing right, right. So well, how it's all it's all at happening at the same time. But, you know, when you get off the when you get off the dock, right? And when you get into the plane, when Tom Hardy flies off, right? Off the runway, every when in those three sequences that's happening, right? As you're getting on the ship and everything that's happening, it's felt like as soon as you go out into sea or as soon as you go into air, that's it. You know what I mean? Like you're immediately in that battle, and it just never lets up for. I don't know how long the film was. Um, it was ninety minutes. It was ninety minutes. And okay. and and Christopher Nolan specifically wanted that time length because the sense of pacing was so, so sort of oh, make your sort of heart race, and he knew he couldn't keep that up for too long. There's not a lot of uh, uh, dialogue in this film, right? But, That's what I said. It's minimal but dialogue. It, this is, but and again, this is and a masterclass keep, keeps in, in filmmaking, engaged right? The whole so time. the way, again, the way he plays with time, the way the sense of realism you have, the sense of immersion, it, it all works. So kudos to you for this one. And again, I th- he if, does it again, man. I, he does it again. 
and you we're going to start have to mention him him in the same terms as some other directors right. not we're not talking about Scorsese and Spielberg yet. he just got to put in more Scorsese work for that bro. right but he's this guy <laughs> right right he's right. doing some things um, so, okay so i can't say enough about um, dunkirk and so that's my three now number 2 for number, me is molly's game Molly's Game. Jessica Chastain, I believe Jessica her name is. Jessica Chastain. And Idris Elba. Yes. They do the Not damn to thing, man. Not confused with Joe's Game. Yes, no. very different. Right, right. But very now, this film was um, Aaron Sorkin's Aaron Sorkin, right? directorial debut. We all know he's the he's prolific a writer. writer. You remember him from The West Wing. You remember him from the Steve Jobs movie. Right, right. You remember he wrote him a from few good Ian men. John Malkovich, I think. He wrote A Few Good Men. Yeah, like, so, you know. But yes. I have no you idea what... You can't handle the truth. That, he gave you that. You want the truth? You, you can't, can't handle, handle it. it. But I, so I don't know what this film's about. Um, other than she's running a poker game and she... Um, she, was a, she, was an Olymp- she was an Olympic uh, skater. And then she had an accident. And then... Speaking of Olympic skaters, honorable mention to I, Skier, Tanya. Skier. Yeah, I was going to say skater. that. Did you see that? Skier. I saw it today. It was Good. not a bad... I, I like it a lot. lot. She's an Olympic skier. Okay. I, I heard it made her, her, her seem almost a sympathetic character. And you get why, you know, she was like that. She uh, still... You, you couldn't see it both ways. She was still a terrible person. But you get it. Um... I would say so, yeah. And a lot, they play up the fact that she's lying when she's trying to tell the story from her view. The right, whole yeah. point of it is like, the truth is what you say it is and the world is going to F you over anyway. Right. Um, um, real quick, with, yeah. uh, so with uh, Molly's Game. So for me, it's a masterpiece, right? And, masterpiece. Yes. And by the way, the cast here, you have Jessica Chastain, Idris Elba, Kevin Costner, um... I don't know who else. <laughs> you got some. Those, you got those some are, good those people. Are the, look, that's yeah. your movie right there. Look, if you have those guys, the writing is phenomenal. The actors' performances, the story beats, as I said before, you know, and when a movie pulls me in and I'm in that immersion feeling with a film, that's when it reminds me of how much I enjoy movies. You know what I mean? Right. And stuff like that. So then, when like something can do that, yeah, you know, and so. I do have some gripes with the film or whatever. You know, it's not perfect or whatever. No film is. But it's not enough to make me dismiss it or to say that it's not a masterpiece and how well this movie was done, uh, how well it was written, (coughs) their interactions. Just, it's dope, man. It's a really, really, really good film. You know what I mean? And I can't recommend it enough. Is that your number two? That is my number two. And I do want to say one honorable mention before we move on. Okay. Um, because I would be remiss if I didn't say this, uh, War for the Planet of the Apes. Okay. Um, and my reasoning is that if you go into the annals of trilogies, right, uh, in film, in film, that would have been in my, 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 you know, I can't think of, uh, uh, in terms of reboots and how well that was done from start to finish. That's definitely our, you know, the, I agree. Those so you're saying movies. you're saying it's in the company of the Captain America trilogy or the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Yes, I Is feel comfortable. I feel comfortable in, in putting it up there. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm not saying it's better or anything like that, but but you say it can it can be mentioned. Yes, from start you can to walk finish, among those giants. Yes, because it, it was just it was just a well done trilogy. That said, the Captain America trilogy is the greatest superhero trilogy of um, all time. Of all time. If you think about every film delivering, because like even the Dark Knight trilogy, that last one, Meander. Yeah, it did. Okay, so that's all I mean, I but did say. you that's like the first Captain mention. America movie? Uh, I think it's the worst of the bunch, but it was a good movie. Yeah, it was okay. Wait, the, you said the, you didn't like the first Captain America? No, no, I didn't say I didn't like it. I said it was the worst of the three. They got progressively better. Yeah, who can say that well, in a yeah. trilogy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because Winter Soldier. Was I thought it. The, but uh, it could be argued that Winter Soldier is a better movie than Civil War. But you saying it's some the best people trilogy. argue that. But I'm all that's, for that argument. <clears throat> that's an argument to be had, and I'm back and forth like day both by movies day. Are good. Which one was which? Right. Both but of them are better. At the than the end first of the day, one. that they 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 brought Spider Man home in that. Right. And, and introduced us to Black Panther. 
So like in Civil War, I, I can't. Where you from, kid? Civil Queens, War, dog. Huh. Brooklyn. But that's that not that's 2016 that talk. Right, 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 right. right. Anyway, talk. so yeah, we're not worried about that. So, so Molly. And it would have been man. perfect if he had said, "Congratulations, Cap, you played yourself." <laughs> you played yourself. Oh yeah, no, Oscar, it would have won for that. They, Molly's that was game. A opportunity. So okay. that's me. Yeah. All right. So, uh, let's see here. Now we're gonna have to go back because my ordering is all jammed up, but that's okay. Work. That's all right. Quite all right. All right. So number five for me is You're killing uh, me, Smalls. It's 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 about to happen. Yeah. It's about to happen. Okay. So number five uh, best movie of the year. Still clicking through. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's happening. It's happening right now. It's happening. It's happening. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey. I'm sorry. Oh, All my right. God. Number five is Mother. <laughs> Mother. With an exclamation point. Darren Aronofsky. Um, Who's Javier it, Jennifer Bardem, Lawrence? And starring Jennifer Lawrence. She is the lead. And and I know the movie, not, I see. <clears throat> I do not want to tell you what this film is about. You guys are connoisseurs of movies because uh, y'all is at least like six of these movies I haven't seen. I like Mother. That that that's good. That's, that's and in this that list. if there this is that, that good. This move this film was very that. divisive. Extreme. It bombed at the box office, but the Rock reason box. it was divisive. First of all, Darren Af- Aronofsky he brought us Black Swan. He also brought us the Noah story. See, this is not the one of your artsy fartsy, you know. <laughs> no, this is the <laughs> definition <laughs> of artsy fartsy, right? But the, to me, film trash, is bro. about this, like, like if I saw it, I would have probably when, said it was when trash. When you have a film that can start a conversation, I actually even think you would like this because this is one of those things that plays on so many levels. It it sticks with you. It lingers. You you can watch it over and over again to interpret what this scene meant. Why is this thing placed in the scene? What right. was that character's motivation? Who, what was the archetype that they were trying to portray there? That fi- this film of any film this year is the biggest conversation starter, in my opinion. Okay. And 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 if you can mm. have a film that works on those layers that leads you to those conversations conversations of interpretation right um it, it, that that that's why you go to the movies okay i know you said molly ga- molly's game is why you go to the movies right things like this is why you go to the movies right so that's my number five okay um and again it's nice to see uh j-law not mailing it in like she did in those last two x-men movies uh she, she she's earned, trying to be she taken seriously as an actress and she's like uh oh, this is trash this is beneath me Jennifer but Lawrence. when she was first getting the check she was just like yo all right so next on my list is a movie called good time another now, one i haven't seen this is starring on robert my list pattinson and but i haven't seen this it. is the most authentic wait wait hold up hold up hold up the, the twilight mother effort he's been putting in work to, to see because of Twilight, I can't see nothing. Listen, he's in. No, I understand that. It's but just I feel like, like yo, he's you're doing whack his, juice and you can't get it all. I he's trying like, to get that that stench off. I oh, feel man. like he's doing his Leonardo DiCaprio and growing a beard, and now people are taking him like seriously. Yeah, okay. He's he's not like the, the yo the, the teen he's, idol right he, now. He's twinkle chest, bro. Nah, <laughs> glitter, bro. I, yes, <laughs> glitter. But honestly, like well, he's just like, oh my god, glitter. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. I can't. No, 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 I can't, yo. I can't do nothing ever, yo. Everything he does, I boycott that. Now, you're so Twilight, bro. This you're Twilight, brother. If you, you sparkles, bro. Now, look, yeah. I don't shimmer. know if you can see that what I have on the screen right now, but this oh, film yeah. is the most Rockbox. accurately. <laughs> d- d- depiction this is the most accurate depiction of new york that i've seen on okay. film in uh, in, almost, in new york in, in what time present day today um or even the 90s really because I, I this may take place in the 90s just based on the clothes that they wear right uh but like this is the new york i grew up in okay right and and you don't see that you see hollywood versions of new york right you see rich sides of new york this is the seedy underbelly of New York and the way that it is depicted, and this is the this story is Hell's Kitchen. of uh, a, 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 a brother trying to save another brother. 
Mm. Um, and I don't, and there's so many other. Like, so are there black things. people in it? There are, and because this is New York. Oh wait, this is that movie with the he has blonde hair. Well, One he dies had... blonde at some point. Um, but and he, yes. does he get locked up? Somebody gets. They locked won't up. let me. Okay, out. all right, all right, yeah, yeah, that is on my list. Okay, now cool. shout out to Akon. This, That's on um, list. and again, th- this. Damn, the guy from Twilight, he's in that movie. He's putting in work these days, man. I can't, bro. Okay. He just Twinkle, did a movie bro. with Charlie Hunnam this year that d- doesn't really. Make any of the lists because it's not like terrible, but it's also not good. Um, <laughs> but again, continue, yeah, yeah, just sort of showing what the penal system is like, All right. what it is, <laughs> what, what, what it is when you need to protect a, a, a family member with special needs, right? And also, just him, also, the he is a bad brother, and also, he loves his brother because he's he, you know. He's getting his brother into this situation. The movie is and absolutely the whole nervous. thing takes place over the course of one night. Ah, um, okay. And it is to, for for something with such a small premise. I, it, it really had me on the edge of my seat in a way that you some see, of the biggest movies. This doesn't movies sound like a seat. movie that I would pay to see. Yeah, this is the movie. No, yeah, I, I actually think you would this. like this. No, you see, like, no, no, no. to pay to see in a theater, no. I mean, not to say I wouldn't watch it and enjoy it, but it's not, definitely not something that's on my radar to pay. Because you have a movie pass, so you just go see movies for the F of seeing them. Right. Which, you know, shout out to movie shout pass. Shout out to movie pass. Invest in one. But uh, if I gotta pay twenty dollars for a movie to get F out of here, I ain't seeing though, nothing with Shimmer Chest, bro. Honestly though, I think like again, this might not be something you would walk into of your own volition. But if you came across it and you were like, okay, I'm watching this and I paid my money, I think you'd be happy with the money you paid because the story yeah. is that deep and it is that sort of visceral that you would be like, yo. Like, you have that same feeling when just you're the watching fact a superhero that you, movie. Like, I wouldn't have, because just the fact that you said Robert, uh, this, the Twilight dude, nah, I'm good. It's, Yo, it's not, real it's quick not, before you move yeah. on, and it's from that A24 films, been, and they've yeah. been putting in work. And that's the that thing, when we talk about nice. losing, a stu- losing a studio in Fox with the Disney purchase, you have new these new studios like Blumhouse that's putting out all Their these catalog horror movies, nice. and you have A24 putting out these yep. crazy dramas. So we have yes, new studios that are making great art. Great so, um, next. next on my list is... They got hits. Uh okay, this is an interesting one. The Killing of a Sacred Deer. This is starring this Colin. Is another one I ain't seen. I yeah, wanted to artsy go, fartsy. No, no, movie. but here's the thing. That's I on knew, my list. You damn I knew team. that you guys. You are it's not elitist. that. It's not that. I knew you guys were gonna pick the this ones that like, like that got a lot of um sort of that. And again, they deserved it. You you both picked amazing movies. But I wanted to sort of try to pick some of the things that maybe didn't get the same commercial and advertising. That these other movies got, yeah, and that were were still like, great films, <laughs> right? But so I like can't you have even high high taste in, in in films and stuff. While I'm here picking comic book trash, no, 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 you pick dope movies. And I, again, like you for your, so good. my for my your, original my, list had for my limited understanding had Thor on it and yeah. Dunkirk on it. But I was like, I knew you guys were gonna pick those, and as yeah. long as they were getting picked. I'm yeah. like, let me. I don't want to pick the same things, yeah. so let me pick some of the ones that like caught my attention, but yeah. you know, uh, probably Gosh, didn't get it much stuff. shine. Right. Um, but the killing of a sacred deer, starring Colin Farrell and um, Tom Cruise's ex-wife. What's her name? Katie Penelope Holmes. Cruz. No, not Katie Holmes. The one before that. Oh, uh, blonde hair. Yes. Uh, I that forget. that uh, is crazy. She's washed. No. Stop it. Stop it. Don't don't disrespect. Right. Um, but this film, if if I said mother is haunting, this this is like I don't want to say it will terrorize you, but like this just lingers with you. And there's oh, Nicole Kidman. I, Nicole there Kidman. You there you go. This film was again one of my favorites of the year, and it's a must watch because. 
for and I, I recommend don't watch any trailers go in blind because half the fun of this movie is not knowing what the hell is going on or what it's about okay and it starts off very robotic uh just and but it's it's a purposeful performance mm. um and it it is really at its heart a greek tragedy but i don't again i don't want to say any more i think that it, it will haunt you and it will I, I i i left this film angry not because it was bad but because of just the things that happened, everything that, that, that happened right? right and and um you just you don't you don't see it coming okay right it, it, so the, it's a very interesting premise and again go in cold okay um and the visuals here are, and it's I have it up on the screen, but the visuals here are amazing. So The Killing of a Secret Deer, Colin Farrell, Nicole Kidman. Gotcha. Um, next on the list is... What you at, number two? I'm number two. This is my second favorite film of the year. Blade Runner 2049. Trash. It was on your worst list, but this yeah. is on my favorites list. I now, Blade Runner twenty forty nine is one of my like top movies. All right. There, this movie plays on so many layers, and I'm so tired of people saying, "Oh, Hollywood is just formula driven, and Hollywood is all about." I, I get that this is a sequel for a franchise, but <laughs> yeah, that but thing. that said, right, people right. say, "Oh, I want something different. I want something different." I just named Mother. I named The Killing of a Sacred Deer. I named um, Good Time, and now I'm naming Blade Runner 2049. All films that di- that were critically acclaimed but did not do well in the box office. Right. So does the does the populace really want original things? Do yeah. they want to think? Do they want conversation starters? Or do they just want things to blow up? And so this was a thinking man's hard sci-fi film that lives up to uh, its its predecessor. The visuals, man. But it's not just the visuals. Like, it played on so many levels. Yeah, it does. If you, if I you mean, look just at the visuals Jordan, alone is, Think about it. Is think insane. about Think about this. His, uh, his companion was Joy. And the person he was at odds with, these are two, the two women in his life, where one was named Joy, the other name was named Love. Yep. Love was out to kill him. And Joy was only there to tell him everything he wanted to hear. Yeah. Think about that for a second. Think about the idea that, um, and again, I don't want to give away too many spoilers because I want people to watch this, but... Have you seen The Greatest Showman yet? I have not, and I have no, I have zero interest in that. Musicals? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of musicals. And shout out to uh, Jay Martinez just joined us from the second page. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, All right. But, but, so again, second favorite film of the year. Right. Um, Blade Runner 2049. It plays on so many levels. Cinematography is great. Um, this film is all about ambiance. Right. Right? And that is the reason why uh, Hans Zimmer decided to go with the haunting score, what you call the bang. That trash. It's it's right. about it's about presence. It's about ambiance, and I think it 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 did it well. I I, I did not see the twist. I, I saw it coming somewhat, but when it, it it the ending was satisfying, and they should never make another one. They should leave it for another thirty years. Don't turn it into a big like war on replicants right. versus humans. This is a, a an amazing. If you are if you are gonna make, um, a a sequel, this is what you do. Okay. And you know maybe it didn't need a sequel, but they made it and they made it well. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, um. One of my one of my um honorable mentions for best movie because I didn't get to say it. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. Deserves it. Deserves it. That was that was a great movie. That was actually on my original list too. Yeah. But, uh, I, you know. Since nobody said I got to put on my honorable mentions. I don't right. blame you. All right. So, uh, it's time for the number one. And guess what? We all chose the same movie for our number one pick. Yeah. Every, all, all of us. And we made these Unanimous. lists individually. 
and we all came at the same number one. Yeah. This is our favorite film of the year, and that is Logan. Logan, Logan. Yes, Logan. Sir. This is up there with The Dark Knight. Numero it is one uno, of the, the, greatest, the greatest comic book movies ever made. Ever. And it to me, it doesn't bar even none. have to be a comic it book doesn't, movie. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's a great movie. It's a this, great film. This, the score was good. I like the Johnny Cash. I like I like the the emotion. I like because as you get older, as as a man who myself is, you know, I ain't gonna date myself, but I'm getting up there, you know, just to see your body don't work the same way it does, you know. It's just like you wake up, you you, you got what sore limbs, your like, knees might hurt, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, but even beyond that, things. Professor Xavier, you know, if you have, you know. Older people in your family, like your grandparents, if you've ever seen them go through Parkinson's or, you know, other degenerative diseases, it's just like it's very relatable. They have superpowers, so it's going to affect them differently, but it was very, it humanized these comic book characters in a way that we have never seen. And that was like great filmmaking. Right. And again, let's just talk about how everybody came with their A game. Daphne Keene, which is X23. It made you feel something. Um, obviously, Sir oh, Patrick she did Stewart, her thing, man, and, and, oh my and God. again, just just movie. seeing Hugh Jackman in his final performance as Logan, and here's here his is his best the, performance. What a send off! Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, and this is why I don't want him to come back because you can't get better than this. No, that's the, that's the reason he said he wasn't coming back. No, because he said Patrick Stewart has told this story several times, but when they were watching in the screening, it's just like he looked over at Hugh Jackman and he was just like he was crying and. He, he reached over and he touched his hand and he was just like, after the movie and he saw it, he was just there like, yo, I can't do another one of these. He was just like, how can you get better than that? You can't. Right, and everybody's going to be like, well, it's not as good as the last one. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Just, you know what I mean? This so is how it, do you do it? It's just like, clearly you're coming back for a check because there's nothing that they're going to write that could be taken. They would, they would make it comic booky again. You can't, they're not going to stay with a serious tone if they brought them back. It wouldn't be as serious as that. Right, and again... Yes, it's up there with the Dark Knight. Fight me. Yeah. <laughs> so, but again, more more about this thing. Yeah. So the thing about this film, and again, it, there's so much context that goes into this. And again, if you watch it blind, it's still an amazing movie. It's an amazing western if you take out the claws. Right. Right. But but think about what what comes with this film. Right. Right. The X Men. Again, Blade kicked off this new superhero world we have. And Thank like, you for that X-Men mention. X-Men comes Thank because you. Blade came. But yes. Blade, Blade and X-Men um, sort of kicked off what we have today. Right, right, right. So right. essentially Blade came to out and then uh, the guys at Fox said, you know what, we can make X-Men. Right. Um, X-Men comes out. Spider-Man comes out. The guys at Marvel are like, it's time. We can make Iron Man. And right. then the rest is history. But... We have Christopher grown Nolan, up. Real quick, sees how X Men is portrayed. He's like, "Hey, I can, I do, can do a, a serious, a serious, take. yes, right." Exactly. And again, that that is the thing. We've seen most of my adult life. I've seen Hugh Jackman playing this character, right, right. And so when we see that, like, he is getting older and he has reached his mortality, it makes you look at your own mortality. Yeah, like we're all gonna die like, if, our, I, if our heroes. Once you start seeing your heroes die, you're done, bro. Right, no and just seeing you. seeing him lose, and he 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 seeing him lose what he loses. Caught Matt else. You know what I mean? Like you know, I, I've we've had some losses in our family, and 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 it was almost sort of reminiscent of that, and so, and then sort of in in all of that, it is passing the baton on to the 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 next generation. Right, even right. though he, you can't always go to the promised land with. Them. He was. It was you very similar them, to the story of Moses. Right, and and again, you teach them what you can in the time that you have, and then right. and then you send them on on and Off hope the that world. you've impor- imparted something of them. We we saw a dysfunctional family that all they had was each other right. in this film, and 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 they still manage to keep. It's very similar to real life. Can. It's just like how you don't we really saw, get it. Until uh, you die, right? You, we saw a broken man sort of find meaning in his life by 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 helping someone. What about Another just, thing, uh, what one about... more thing, might I interject? Wolverine went out the same way he came in, helping a young girl find herself in this world. Right, right, and what, I mean, just what about the the aspect that how Logan mentions 
you know, everybody thinks, oh, we're mutants and we're, you know, we can't be defeated and all this and that. No. We right. Can, you know what I mean? Like, mutants die and They're get hurt and age. Yeah, they age and you thought he was going to be this new uh, set of species and take over. Nope. That didn't happen. You know what I mean? Just on to the next. You right. know what I'm saying? On to the next and one. So on to the next one. He's struggling financially. You know right. what I'm saying? We, like, we, like the he's film working opens with just him to take care of at, as a, a limo driver. It's very he sad. Like medication. he's working. Spoilers, whatever. But he's working just to get enough money so that he could get a boat to take Professor out, X out to live out his last days. Because if they're out in the middle of the ocean, he won't. Because of his degenerative disease, where he could kill people, he's going to take them out as a boat, and they're going to live out their last days there. And then when Professor X died, he was going to kill himself. Which is some sad shit. And again... That's dark. Yeah. And again, <laughs> the film still had heart through... Yeah. through. Oh, absolutely. So as, as absolutely. much pain as Logan was in, and as sad a state, the fall from grace that Professor X was in, there was still hope in Daphne Keene. There was still hope in X-23. Right. Yeah. Right? And, and, and she was a powerhouse in this thing. Right. And, and I, I hope that there's some kind of... Uh, Oscar love for this movie even if it doesn't get best picture even though this is my favorite film of the year bar none right we right. mentioned you know um, thir- 12 different movies right right of, of what we thought was the best and we all came to this is number one right and it was from all across the spectrum right a gambling game a, 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 a Greek tragedy a Darren Af- Aronofsky, weird film, other superhero movies. Right. This is the one. This is the real deal, folks. Best film of the year, hands down, bar none. Let's wrap this thing up soon. Um, so, 2017. Um, Most anticipated movie? No, no, we're going to get there in a second. But I just want to... Was What was the biggest story to you this year? We just want a couple of minutes each. What do you think? Um, the biggest story, uh, I don't know if we're still talking about this, but the biggest ongoing thing is this, the Me Too campaign with the scum that's going in Hollywood, you know? That's because every day is something new. Right. Right. And I think that, I think, I don't, I don't know if you had something different. I thought you were actually going to say Cry Reese <laughs> was no. the biggest story. Uh, but it's definitely the Me Too thing. Right. And, and, and so we're, we're. I feel like in terms of film and entertainment, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I I feel like for me, and this is you know sort of sad in in its own way that um, you know it's like you know surveillance where you you always assume this was happening, right? right. You always assume the government's watching you. Right. right, and then you get confirmation from Edward Snowden, and then it's like, wow, that's real. Right, we knew and this all along. The casting was like couch was casting always couch. my entire like, life. Right, I knew we, that's what it was. We've all heard of the term casting couch. When I saw then, Marilyn Monroe as a kid, I was like, yeah, she definitely, you know, banged to get. Slow down, slow down. It's not even that. That's so, what it was. So, she did. But but again, um, Hollywood and, and was invented think, so old dudes could bang hot young chicks. Sorry, that's why money was invented. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Again, Facts. this idea that, like, we, we, we are in very strange times right now. And I think that this is uncomfortable, but maybe it's supposed to be. Right. Uh, maybe because no changes will always be uncomfortable. I do want to just take the time. This is not about any victim blaming or any side taking or whatever uh-huh. while i do believe we need to believe uh victims yeah i i we also need to um i it's very strange what we we are in a place where an accusation alone could ruin is you. enough to ruin it. now if you did something then you're scum right and you sh- anything that happens to you you deserve it, right? Right. But we we're just in this place where if I if if you hear something that happened and you say, "Hey, I want to hear the facts or I want there to be some sort of due process." Right. You it's sort of it's it's sort of like you condone this sort of behavior. And I don't I don't condone any of that behavior, 
But it gets weird where we're in a place where everything is tried in the court of public opinion. Right. And now, again, one could argue that maybe this is where you try those things because a lot of these cases, there is no legal recourse. And so the no, because the, the powerful is protected. Right. So that's how it works. But but again, if has there ever been a case in history of a of a false accusation? Yes, um, plenty of times it's mad dudes in so, jail right now over false al- accusations. Oh, you mean that are the Central are people, Park Five? Are people in a right. like locked up? How many, Central Central Park 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 How many men of color have been falsely accused oh, of sexual tons. assault? So if we are in that bro. place. If we are in and a place, they have no power. I'm until right. they are locked up, it's right? Been, it's been and happening. again, if we are in a place where we're saying people, and again, we, the 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 pendulum is swinging, and I feel like we are in the middle of an overcorrection. And again, it's not supposed to be uh, a comfortable thing, right? But I just think that we should take care to say that. We are everything is being tried in the court of public opinion. But be clear, Hollywood needs to be purged. All these <clears throat> sick f's out there need to be dealt with. Absolutely, like the, the Kevin Spacey crap. It's just like if you're going around touching little boys or whatever, it, it, that's that's some crazy but stuff. I, I just, or even beyond that, like women, it's just because it's been going on for like decades. Right. It's just like okay, if you don't do whatever, then they bad mouth you to whoever, so you can't get work. Right. Or to yeah. Yeah. Other yeah. Yeah. Milano's dealing with that right now. Yeah. So. How do we both at, at the and same time? And they say you're time, difficult to work with or whatever. <laughs> yeah, how just we, use code words yeah. and all that. Like get out of here. How do we? Clowns. How do we combat um, sexual harassment and assault in the workplace and at the same time, um, sort of give people due process and due course? Can we do those two things at the same time? Can we have a nuanced conversation, or is it for too long? Uh, you know, women have not been able to have that power. So we just say, if you make an accusation, we want to believe you. And so we're going to ruin someone's career. The people have women to have, demand for women things have all to the be power more nowadays. I mean, women been had the power, but they have even more now. Well, I just think that the people have to demand for things to change and realize that the power is because just the fact if a woman says something, people. even if it ain't true, a woman can say something and you're done. But again, you know, how long have women been trying to say something and have not been listened to? But be clear, most of these people are guilty because they even came forward and said they they admitted guilt. So be clear about that. But there's also the argument, you know, that if somebody makes a false accusation, because this is what I truly believe, anybody who makes a false accusation against somebody should be prosecuted. Yeah, but how do you know who's what? And then we don't want to say... No, if a person comes... If a person makes an accusation... No, here's the only thing. If a person makes an accusation and then comes after the fact and admits that they lied about the allegation, lock them the hell up. You can have somebody falsely admit to something. Yeah. It just takes powerful men with the right lawyers to set you up because the law is designed to protect powerful people, those with money and power and influence, it's designed to protect them. Let me ask them. you a question. So, so like, somebody, say, say, you let's can say be, a woman, you can be, somebody can falsely accuse somebody, the and they thing. have the power, uh, they have the power, they have the power, and they can say, all right, get the lawyers and set it up, and then say, like, this is what you're facing if you don't agree to these terms. And you don't agree to those terms, and you go, okay, and you think about what's going to happen to you, and then you come out and say, you know, all right, I did blah, 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 I was wrong, and whatever, whatever. And now, it public opinion like we no. just said it's different nah, if you just drop the charges but if you are admitting or they know that you lied about some something no. they know for a fact you should be yeah but how up. do you how do you know how for a fact because a lot of these things can't be proved right and and i get that's why sometimes it is in the court of public opinion but if you if you make an accusation against me but you can't prove it because there's no physical evidence is that grounds for me to say well you should go to jail now you couldn't prove it therefore it's false Right. Here's my opinion on this. And I do understand what you're saying because what re- what recourse does the accused have? It's supposed to be guilt, innocent until proven guilty. But now we're saying it's the other way around. So I do understand that. But as far as saying we're locking people up, you know, if somebody got locked, up, like let me ask you a question: If you got locked up, if say somebody say you did some stuff that you know you didn't do, and then you got locked up, and then whatever you were in jail for five, six, ten years, whatever the hell. 
and then they find out after the fact this person lied, whatever, you don't feel that they should be locked up and you don't get your time back? I think it all depends on how... And they willfully lied on you? Like, say they knew their mans did it, but... Say they knew their friend did it, but then they blame you because they need whoever. You know what I'm saying? No, I I I understand that. And and, in those cases, I just think it would have to be, like, based on the case, if we found out that there was malicious intent, because sometimes these things are traumatic. Or if it's it's a chick... things differently. Say it's a white chick who likes black penis, right? Slow down. Slow down. Take it easy. She don't want... Take it easy. And then she got a train ran on her, but she don't want her parents to think she's a slut. And then she goes and says Uh, that I got raped by these black dudes. You don't think she should be locked up? Nope. Yes, she should be. Nope. Uh, I think that's a good place to change topics. I'm just saying. All right. People who lie and get people locked up should be locked up themselves. We want to talk about is, unless, unless Mr. Woods, you want to add anything to this? I'll just say, I'll say this one thing and let's move on. Uh, in, to, in reference to what you're talking about, there's a gentleman, and there's so many, I, I can go off the, a rattle off a list of names, but look up, Google Mark Denny, right? Yeah. Mark Denny is a black man who was convicted of robbery and rape at the age of 16, and he was locked up for, I believe, over 30 years, right? Yeah. His case just got overturned, right? Right. The first thing the news reporter <clears throat> asked him was, how do you think the victim feels? <laughs> That's not funny, but... Hey, man, being black in America, bro. Exactly. Now you can move on. And that's the life that that goes on every day. I'm just saying. So, and I I just think that we should, this is a conversation that needs to be had. There are thousands of black people locked up over false allegations right now. No, no, I I understand that. But I do want to say it's a conversation that needs to be had. And for too long, men in power have been... Using that, you know how many corrupt power? police have locked people up just because they need a body in jail no, and no, because I, of probably own prisons. I I, and, I I get that, but what what I'm saying is again, men who use their power to sexually assault and abuse women should be prosecuted. But I, I just think we we should have that conversation with some nuance, yeah. and so that that because trying people and ruining people's lives and careers just based off of an accusation. Yeah, that's I, that's, that's a, We're getting to a scary place. Yeah, yeah. Where what you, what's your thoughts on the Tavis Smiley thing? Because he's saying, like, I just had a girlfriend at work and they're trying to twist it and saying whatever the, the hell, you know? Right, and again, I think, I think we... I think this is why you can't, long, you can't be with anybody at your workplace at all, bro. I think, I think for too long, women have been <laughs> silenced. And now we're seeing somewhat of an overcorrection. I just wonder what the lasting effects will be because there are a lot of like movers and shakers that are that are saying now like, well, I'm just not taking an interview. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm not going to sit alone because I don't want that. And again, that is an overreaction in itself. But the fact is, if that's happening, is that the outcome that we want from this? Right. And again, it's not to say that that we need to, you know. Um, it's not to say that we need to just accept uh, these things that are going on, but I think we do ha- need to have a more nuanced conversation than Absolutely. we are having. I because agree. I do feel like there is a, a bit of sensationalism in what's going on now. But that said, it is time for our 2018 preview. Now, each of us have chosen five movies that we are looking forward to for 2018, and we think these films should be on your radar. Now, we're all going to go, uh, we're all going to tell you our one through five, and we are going to each pick one trailer to show you uh, that we think you should have your eye on. So, uh, Mr. Johnson, yes, what do you uh, got for us? I'm going to speed through these because we're running long. Yes. Yeah. But, uh my top five, and no, and should I just start from the bottom, or is there a particular order? There's no order, order right? There's no yeah, particular the, order. No, no order. By the way, we on per, we purposely excluded uh, Avengers because that's number Deadpool one for everybody. Because nobody and, wants to and, see those and, movies. And, and, everybody wants and to see Black those Panther, movies. Black Panther. Because come on, son, we know come y'all on, watching son. those. Those are top three. Stop it. So, so we we excluded those. Now, this is movies we're looking forward to in 2018. Besides Avengers, Black Panther, and Deadpool two, go. Okay, and this is hard because I had to leave off certain movies because I only get to pick five. But if I got to pick ten, there'd be more on it. But there's Enter the Spider-Verse. 
Okay. Ah, that cartoon movie. Yes. Yes, yes got to see that because it's just gonna expand Miles the world. Miles Morales, baby. Okay. Black Spider Man, gotta love it. That's what's up. Hellboy. I'm very interested to see ah, what David the demand from uh, Stranger Things is going to do with it. Very interested in seeing that. Okay. Uh, there is also uh, New Mutants. New Mutants. Now, they're doing okay. a horror movie take on this thing, right? Because I was thinking, I was just there like, should I put Dark Phoenix on New Mutants? I was just there like, uh, <laughs> New Mutants. I don't right. know about this Dark Phoenix thing. Because I like the fact that they're doing a new thing with it. Because after that apocalypse crap, I was just like, I kind of lost faith in, faith in that X- X-Men franchise. Uh, and after that, I got Incredibles 2. Mm, okay. Finally back. I've been looking for that finally back. part 2 since part 1. All these years later. Like a decade later or more. However long it's been. But it's been a long time. Where's my super suit? And, and again, one more <laughs> thing about the New Mutants. Why I'm excited for that film. I'm glad right. you, you uh, chose it. Because if Deadpool was a comedy and Logan was a Western drama, this is a horror movie. Yes, and man. It's straight I R. like how they're switching and it I up like with the these. R-rated yeah. side of X Men, and they're, I like they're, it. they're really leaning hard into the horror movie aspect. All right, anything else? And uh, my number one, number movie. one most anticipated, Ready Player One. Hey, hey, that's on my list also. Okay, okay. Ready Player One because that first trailer it looked like a brick, uh-huh. but okay. when that second trailer came out, woo! Yeah, yeah, when they gave some story. Fire. And that's that movie the thing. was fire. That's, that movie is also Spielberg on. is back. Yeah, it's great to see Spielberg doing sci-fi again. He's been doing a lot of kids movies recently and he, right. I mean he just did the post. Basically at this stage in Spielberg's career, Spielberg Big fucking giant or whatever it's called. Um the BFG, right? Yeah. Uh but he he does whatever he wants and you know, he's put in enough work that he has my my movie my, my eyeball. Yeah, man. Right? You can catch uh, some Al Steven Spielberg, but this one looks like a winner. Exactly. So, um this, but this looks like a return to form, right. and I'm very excited to see it. Where he's playing in a world, you got your man where, where back. He can put together all of his old, like there's dinosaurs in this thing. They're, man, you, know you got like, Chucky, right. you got like so, Dragon Ball Z, Star and all Wars, types of all stuff over so, there, man. Right. Everybody in there, right? Okay, okay. Those are your five, Mr. Woods. Yes, sir. Um, what do you got? What so, you got for us? Den of Thieves. Den of Thieves. Okay. I'm actually, I'm actually. I'm actually actually interested in That's seeing a that. Over here. It's yeah, late. a little bit. It's late. Uh, the post. Okay, that's another Steven Spielberg. That's Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks, and, and the Street Monster. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I she see farts on camera and gets Oscars. That's what happens. I'm with it. Doesn't okay. bother me. Uh, so and a wrinkle in time actually. Ava um, DuVernay. Um, now this is the the highest budget of any um any female director has gotten for a film. I hope I hope this even more than Wonder Woman, the, the cat, which was on nobody's list for best movies. It looks uh well casted. Are we all? Does that mean make us all misogynists? <laughs> um, Listen, it was okay. I don't um, mention the Wonder Woman. It yeah. was a it was a cultural touchstone in twenty seventeen. Right. So um also Han Solo. And my reasoning for the solo movie, yeah, my well, reasoning for first it, Star Wars flop. Well, no, it, because again, as I said on a number of shows, that Star Wars is this vast universe, and these things—if these things don't work, then it's really pigeonholed to just the Skywalker story. No, but I feel and, like going with Han Solo is another way to stick to the original characters, and it's like if the universe should be bigger than that. I don't know that I wanted to see. A uh, Han Solo movie. Like Although his that said, kind of thing. that said, if you showed me an Obi Wan movie, like what was he doing after Revenge of the Sith, I might be interested in that. I might buy that if yeah. that's what you were selling. Well, again, but it Han happens, Solo. I don't know that I want to see a young. It Han happens Solo. on the animated films and on the animated shows and things like that, but you don't see it cinematically live action. So right. that's, this is that's completely off to topic to. and, and uh, whatever. But what's up with that Matrix movie that's supposed to be coming out? They're in the writer's room now trying to figure out what they're going to do. That's, um, that's not happening in 2018. Yeah, they should super make it, you know, a movie about, uh, what you call it, uh, what's his name? Lawrence Fishburne character, uh, uh, Morpheus? Well, I, don't know, yeah. I don't know that I want to see that. Because like we don't... i see them yeah. continue the story and maybe just yeah, give us some allusions to that. I don't, uh, I don't, yeah. I don't know if I want to see a young, a young uh, Morpheus. Um, I mean, Morpheus is really the one. And another... 
movie that I want to see is Red Sparrow. Okay. You yeah. mean you mean Black Widow? <laughs> Red Sparrow. Okay. Okay. Is Red that Sparrow. your five? That is my five. Is I do you... have uh, two honorable mentions that we're doing there. Mortal Engines. Okay. Mortal Engines. Peter Jackson. You said I, I didn't hear none of them. Give them. Run, not, run that, them run that list right again. Now. Run that list back. Oh, uh, Den of Thieves. Right? That's with Curtis Jackson and someone else. Nobody wants to see Pacific Rim 50 too? Cent? 50 Cent. Okay. Uh, Han oh, okay. Solo, the Han Solo That's coming movie. out in theaters? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, Han Solo, right? Uh, Red Sparrow. Shout out to 50. Getting okay. them checks. The Post. Okay. Right, Steven Mel Street. Spielberg. Still Steven Street Spielberg. Monster, Tom yeah, Hanks. Tom Hanks. And American A Wrinkle in Time. Okay. Okay. And then my two honorable mentions is um, Mortal Engines. Okay, again, Peter Jackson is finally coming back to the world of fantasy and making an original fantasy story. Yeah. So it, this is a post-apocalyptic future where cities, entire cities, have to basically live on wheels. So I'm interested to see that. And Phantom Threat. Daniel Phantom Day. Threat. Daniel Lewis, Day Lewis's last film. Last film. If it see, he is the the male equivalent to Meryl Streep. Yes. In terms of Oscar cal the number of Oscar caliber performances and wins. Yep. This was the guy from Gangs New York, also Last of the Mohicans, also There Will Be Blood. Also everything. Also Lincoln. Yeah. So <laughs> just, just also um, everything. Yeah. yeah. So I'm 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 interested in that movie. Now, my top five most anticipated films of twenty eighteen are in no particular order. Now let me I have to write this down. Uh, let's see. Firstly, I have Annihilation. Uh, okay. Now, this is a hard sci-fi film. Um, not unlike um, <coughs> the... Not unlike... I, it's not... It's in that same sort of hard sci-fi as Blade Runner 2049. Um, it is... Um, So Blade Runner 2049, um, there was, it's, it's, I don't want to give away the plot, but check out Annihilation. It looks like it's going to be a, an amazing piece of uh, hard sci-fi filmmaking. All right, next on my list is The Current War. Now, this is the war of uh, Westinghouse versus Edison and the wild card of Nikola Tesla about who would control the future of the industrial revolution in America and the world about um, sort of when uh, the, when the world came to electricity. Right. Um, now I do have an honorable mention, okay. and this is from shout out to uh, Joe Oswald, also from the second page. Hostels. It's a western, uh, not unlike. It reminds me of Three Ten to Yuma, right? But that didn't make my list. But that is an honorable mention. So thank you for reminding us of uh, that. I got Everybody a couple honor, honorable that. mentions. Uh, shout out to Robert, but uh, Aquaman is an honorable mention, not because I want to see it, but it's just like you got to watch the Titanic sink. <laughs> oh yeah. my god uh, yeah that could be the last uh, yeah, the last the one final nail in the coffin to the DCEU so but my next movie is Alita Battle Angel because I think that film this is James Cameron's baby he's been waiting over 15 years to make this film right and he was waiting until the technology was right and now he and has now he has Ghost Robert in the Shell done Rodriguez. right yes yes and I think this will be Ghost in the Shell done properly so very excited for this one. The next one on my list is Ready Player One. Uh -huh. uh, again, uh, so, okay. also chosen excited by Mr. Johnson. Right, right, right. This okay. is Spielberg returning to form taste. in sci-fi. It, 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 the possibilities here are endless, and I'm very excited to see what he has in store for us in the Oasis. And... Uh, though I this is a this is an obscure one, but I think my most anticipated film for 2018 is a film called The Death of Stalin. 
Now this thing chronicles the you and your artsy fartsy shit of when uh, Joseph no, Stalin died. Yeah, this this one. And what I saw that. This the one looks good. sort of circus was <laughs> around that time. <clears throat> so uh, those are our top five uh, most anticipated movies, not including Avengers, Black Panther, or. Um, Deadpool. Deadpool two. Right. So now we are another eight. honorable mention honorable would be uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. Uh, also, I'm looking forward to seeing Wreck It Ralph two. Yes. Because you don't get Ready Player One without Wreck It Ralph. It's kind of similar. Is it? Uh, it's a video it game. Completely, completely separate. I, I, I feel like know. it's a bunch I of video like game characters. Re- <laughs> Is it not kind of, kind of, sort of? But because all them video ca- game characters kind of interact with one another, and it's kind of going to be that in here. It's different, you know, on a virtual reality thing, but still video games. Okay, so each of us now uh, of our most anticipated movies is going to pick a trailer just in case you guys don't go and do this homework on your own. We're going to pick the trailer that we think you should see. So who wants to pick a trailer first? Red Sparrow. Red Sparrow. All right, we're going to do the Red Sparrow trailer. This is starring Jennifer Lawrence. Okay. All right, let's see what this film has in store for us. So, let's... Are you sure this is not Mother? Nah, it's not Mother. It's not, okay. She might pull a performance. What, Jennifer Lawrence in the two? Yeah. She's doing a lot, huh? She might be someone I love. Take off your dress. Oh. Oh, okay. This is 50 (laughs) Shades. She naked? What is it? Titty balls. Easy. Easy. When I was in Moscow, I heard about a program. Young officers trained to seduce and manipulate. I pointed to her boobies. To use their bodies. To use everything. Oh, this is the Black Widow. This is not the Black Widow. Okay, it's not the Black Widow. That's That's what she is. Oh, it's Atomic Blonde. Joel Egerton. Oh, yeah. He's in this movie. He's the man. He's the man. Okay. Why do I feel like I've seen this movie like three, four times in Hollywood? Have you? Um, I, it, it looks interesting to me. Okay, so. She's the Sparrow, man. What do you got for us? Oh, the trailer? Yeah, which which is the one out of everything? Ready Player One, bro. Ready Player One. That's the one. Ready Player One. Ready for it by Taylor Swift. No. (laughs) Make sure it's not the first trailer. Yes, yes, yes. The Rockbox trailer. Don't play the Rockbox trailer. Don't play the 18 minute trailer. Okay. Come on, guy. All right. Here we go. Ready Player One. Trailer two. What do we got here? My name is Wade Watts. Now this is gonna show us My a dad little picked bit more that name because it sounded like a superhero's alter ego, like Peter Parker or Bruce Banner. But he died when I was a kid. My mom too. I thought he was saying Bruce and Banner died. I ended up here. Can Bruce Banner die? Sitting here in my tiny corner of nowhere. There's nowhere left to go. Nowhere. Except the Oasis. A whole virtual universe. People come to the Oasis for all the things they can do. Now let me ask you a question. How much of this is like nostalgia porn? Because of all the things they can be. Can you feel this? 
You know what I mean? Like, is there a story there, or is it just gonna like keep on you with like visuals from your childhood? So what? <laughs> Cares, man. Hello. If you're watching this, I'm dead. I created a hidden object, an Easter egg. Mad Willy Wonka. The first person oh, yeah, to absolutely. find the egg will inherit half a trillion dollars and total control of the Oasis itself. This makes me want to play my Oculus Rift. Yeah, man. And go look at some and if there is not, part. if there's not a Ready Player One game on the Oculus Rift when they come out, like they fail. Yeah. Right, right, right. I'm talking about actual life and death stuff. The Oasis, the world's most important economic resource. And it's nothing less than a war for control of the future. Here comes the money shot. Here we go. Wait. This does look crazy. Look at Tron, King Kong. Like many of you, I only came here to escape. Look at Iron Giant. Look at but I found something much bigger Chucky. than just myself. Are you willing to fight? Look at Gundam. Help us save the Oasis. Yeah, this is looking crazy. As long as you don't think that's Voltron. It's, it's, it's crazy, it's Gundam. bro. Right. All right. So, and sir. What are you going to give these fine folks? All right. I, this is, I, I think I'm saving the best for last, but we will see. And LeVar, I know you said artsy oh. fartsy, but I think you oh, will oh, like oh, this one. I know you. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> I am going to show you guys the death of Stalin. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be better than that trailer, bro. Now, remember, this is based on true events. The Russian dude, dictator, Stalin. Bruce Lee, yes. <laughs> now, check this out. Tell me what you think. This was actually supposed to come out this year, but it's a Weinstein film, and now oh, it's a they want to get the stink off of that. So, let's see what you got. Just the look of his face, I was like, okay, it's a comedy. It's a comedy. You shut the fuck up before you get us both killed. Stalin is dead. Oh my god. Our general secretary is lying in a puddle of indignity. Yeah, he's feeling unwell, clearly. I want to make a speech at my father's funeral. Um, but no problem. Technically, yes, but practically. When I said no problem, what I meant was no, no problem. Ignore me. Again, Stalin would have based on true events. Right, right, right. All those in favor. Terry, you... Unanimously. We need change. Well, if you can mobilize first. Oh, seems to be me. Sneaky little shit. The race has started. We need to start putting together a plan. How can you run and plot at the same time? I have no idea what is going on. I'm the peacemaker, and I'll fuck up anyone who gets in my way. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Give it! Hit it! Shoot her before him, but make sure he sees it. Kill him, dump him in the pulpit. And I'll leave the rest up to you. We have to act. I really need your help. I'm going to have to report this conversation. Threatening to do harm or obstruct any member of the Presidium in the process of looking at your fucking face. <laughs> I took Germany. I think I can take a flesh lump in a waistcoat. No matter what happens, I will never let any harm come to you. I may as well just shoot myself like mother. Jesus Christ, did Coco Chanel take a shit on your head? No, he did not. Stalin will be loving this. I'll take it from here. Good luck, ladies. You know, all of you can kiss my Russian ass. Don't worry, nobody's gonna get killed, I promise you. No. Let me just say, you don't know me very well if you think I like that, like rock well, box, bro. Like, I wouldn't see that if you paid me to see it. Well, for Like, not interested at all. Well, for me, that but you, you just don't have good taste, sir. Yeah, you're on the list. This, it's okay. this, this um. It looked like something that George Clooney would be in. 
Like, seeing that, I was just like, I was waiting for George Clooney to come out because he stays doing movies like that. Well, I might not be saying his name uh, correctly, um, Armando Iannucci, right? Okay. But, because uh, this, as soon as I saw this trailer, I'm like, this has the style and feel of Veep. Okay. And then, go, lo and behold, Armando Iannucci is the creator of Veep. Okay. Because Perfect. I watch Veep and all Veep the time. And Veep is an amazing show. I watch Veep all the time and stuff like that. Yeah, it so doesn't look like my cup of tea. This is, this is going to be hilarious. I don't know, man. I, I cannot wait for that. For that, for that film. This will literally well. have you crying. If yes. it's that style, it's going to have you crying. All right. So. so, folks, we have come to an end. We, we, we told you our best. We gave you our worst. We try to do a little bit of introspection. I hope we didn't get in trouble with that Me Too talk. Uh, and we told you what we are looking forward to in the year to come. So we thank you for coming on this journey with us this year. It's been a long year, a long road. We put in a lot of work to get here. We're getting better as we go. And we appreciate every view, every comment, and every yes. like that we get. Very so true. I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you, Mr. Johnson. I want to thank you, Mr. Woods, for, for, for all putting together so that we could sort of create this thing. It's like a, a, a clash of personalities that I think uh, will give our, our, our audience, uh, you know, something to something. Let's give substance. them something to talk about. So, uh, right. again, thank, thank everybody that, that is watching, and we are going to do bigger and better things in the year to come. Um, we are only going to get more polished. We're going to get better, and we want to we want to we want to shine this turd up for you. So um, <laughs> between this, between the it. second page, just look out. There are more things to come on the horizon. In the pipeline. So, yeah. Very uh, true. Mr. Woods, any parting words for the new year that you want to leave these good folks with? Um, thank you. It, you said everything. So uh, thank you very much. We do appreciate it. And we are working on this. And we, we're working on the format. We're working on tightening a lot of things up. And uh, we working appreciate on it. filming this thing on time and not in the middle of the night. It's coming. We're going to have a regular schedule right, for you right. very soon. But And we do have some things in the pipelines and some things uh, in the works. So Some new shows coming, too. Thank you oh. for your patience and everything. We appreciate it. All. Also, Thank we you. are going to be doing reviews for this season's Black Mirror very soon. So you can look out for those on right, the YouTubes right, right. and the first Facebooks and whatnot. Very good show. Mr. Johnson, anything you want to leave them with? Any parting words? For the new year. Um, I wish everybody watching the show happiness, health, and wealth in the coming year. Absolutely. Have a great 2018. Because this year wasn't shit. Try. <laughs> this year was try. 2017, the year of the rock box. 2017 okay. was a brick. <laughs> hey, man. We got some good movies, though. Uh, yes. All right. And, um, yeah. I, I said it all already. I, I think I, I'm, I'm grateful for every view comment and like that we get and tell your friends to tell a friend that it's them again it's them again yeah uh but again 2018 r squared network on the real the second page this sports show i'm trying to get mr woods to do right, and this right, right. uh toy review show i'm trying to get mr johnson to do we'll see if i can talk him into it in the, in the year coming put you on blast on camera man don't uh, you put that shit on me call coercion but again Thank you so much, and we'll you see. can find we'll me on your favorite social media network, as long as it's not Snapchat, at Steve A.M. Johnson. Mr. Johnson, where can they find you? The Dude Abides with a Z on and a couple gram. periods in between. In the oh, I like that. The Dude Abides with a Z and a couple of periods in between. And Mr. Mr. Woods, yeah. where can they find you? Why Woods, Why Not across the board, um, or whywoodswhynot.com. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, and uh, with that, we bid you adieu, and we will see you in the next year. Yeah, 2018. All right. Later. All right, all right, all right. Peace. Ooh.